Seven minutes past the hour. It is a brand new day here on the Rick and Bubba Show. Thank you so much for being with us. 866 Weeby Bitch. The gang back together again. Helmsy and Adler back uh, from a couple of days off. And uh, so now we have uh, the full staff here. I want to thank Sergeant Pepper for uh, being here over the last couple of days. Great work keeping things rolling on the TV side. Uh, as always, we thank him so much uh, for always helping when, when needed. Um, don't forget, go to rickandbubba.com for all the information about the show. You've got uh, the O'Reilly Auto Parts upcoming events. You've got all the social media links right there on the homepage, both for the show and individuals. Uh, just a lot happening. Uh, don't forget the store, some new items there. That's happening for you as well. So, uh, And uh, according to all the shipping uh, <laughs> nightmares, go ahead and get those Christmas orders ready now so those can be processed because you never know. All right, let's bring them in. I just said they're back. Adler, he's got TV. There's Helmsy over there. There's Greg all happy to be here. Yeah. It's the good time, gang. What's up, boys? How are y'all? Morning, so, morning. Afternoon, it, afternoon, whatever the happening? case. Yeah. Glad to be back. Good. Good to have you back, man. Oh, yeah, whatever. Uh, well, no, I'm serious. <laughs> You're good to have the yeah, crew the back, man. Yeah. I had to have Greg pick me up this morning. I, yeah, I had to pick little Johnny up. On Friday, <laughs> I think I'm going to. Do you toot the horn? Like, <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Come on, so Carpo's here. <laughs> I always tell him, um, text me when you turn on shades. Mm-hmm. And that's local for a lot right. of people. But okay. Greg knows what I mean. You know what I mean. Yeah. And it gets yeah. It gives me he t- he'll and I don't know when you text me because that could be when you first turn on or it could be when you're mm-hmm. about to turn off. I don't know. It just depends on when I think. But about. that gives me a few minutes to walk up to the top and, yeah. and wait on him. And I, <laughs> I'm sitting there with my little bag just waiting like I'm at the bus stop. <laughs> yeah. He has to get one of them chirpas to help him come up that hill and bring, uh, his, bring right. his bags yeah, with him. Yeah. We have uh, he's, got quite, he's got quite a pull there. He comes crawling up. Yeah. <laughs> can't can't give details at this point. Mm-hmm. Um and but. I think by Friday I'll be able to talk about it. We've okay. basically been down to one car yeah. for a good <clears throat> two weeks, maybe two and a half, and mm-hmm. we'll be down to one car until this Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, Amanda's been bringing me. It's been a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Amanda's been bringing me up here. You feel like you're a kid and, again. And dri- because <laughs> driving around. Well, I can't. I don't I can't, have my license. I can't. I know Greg. This is Greg, and he's going to get. He gets on me about this, and I get it. And you get on me too. Because he, he essentially comes right by my house every morning. But I don't want to lean on him every single day. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to do – I don't really want to be that like guy. like a block out of my way. Yeah. I don't want to yeah, believe really. that. I'm going to charge him gas. Guy. Yeah. I am. Well, it's So your, Amanda it, has got up. Okay, here's what's been going on lately. Amanda has been getting up, bringing me up here. And then um, when um, – then when she takes kids to school – and then she comes here, mm-hmm. and and then I run her. The hospital's just right down the road, so I mm-hmm. run her to the hospital run and come around, back, yeah. and then go pick her up in the afternoons. And so we've been able to make it work, but it's been good. Would have come to find out he made all that up. He had his license pulled for a DUI. <laughs> <and that's laughs> yeah. good work. By the way, speaking of that, or he's hiding that. a car in the garage and he just wants to be reused. <laughs> oh, even better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it makes his day. <laughs> but look, don't don't blame us. For being like, man, I don't want to ask him to come, even though it's right there, because you're Why? the worst. Because anytime anybody mean? offers to help you, you're like, I don't need no well, help. I don't want to be that guy. I don't well, want to be different. that guy. Oh, you got some weird dude sleeping in your bed. Well, that's a completely oh, different thing. I mean, you know. <laughs> and so don't you dare different. blame us for for the reaction <laughs> that's that we, not we true. give. <laughs> what? Have I ever acted like I didn't want to pick somebody up? No, it's not that. It's the other well, way. Well, that's what you when, need to when, base when, it on. When we are want to help you. It's, well, I don't want help. <laughs> there you go. And no, now, no, but if I did, well, and Greg, that's why I hadn't asked. You. See, this has been going this on for it. two weeks, well, and I hadn't dumb. asked you, but like one time that's because dumb of that it. Is. Do you rest I drive right but, by your house? On my way this to is work? the same speech we give good. you. No, it's not. Uh, We're talking uh, about sleeping in somebody's house. No, we've asked to pick. Uh, we, I, I've even said when you've had these long breaks and you're like you hung out. Hey, I'm, I'm like, hey, times? come on over and hang out. I ain't coming over there. How many? At first, I don't sound like that. <laughs> How many times have you picked me up down here when I leave my vehicle to get it serviced uh, in Hendrick? Whenever Auto it needs Mall. service, sales, I mean service, finance, and handle it all right there on the lot. By the way, notice something about his truck this morning that I absolutely love, and okay. I did not know. And it's the bow tie on the front lights up with yeah. the lights. Mm. Did not know that. You talking about the Ohio country? You talking about yeah. when y'all ride together? I saw it coming down the y'all hill. Y'all both this put morning. your elbow thought, on the well, elbow. Rest you know, together. he rides with a Hendrick driver. <laughs> That bow tie does look good, little. It does. Yeah, yeah. It does. Caught me off guard. Didn't know it did that. Yeah. Do your elbows I, touch? They don't. No. no. We hold hands sometimes. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but yeah, well, I, I can't wait to have that story uh, be brought to life. Yeah, but, so that's um, yeah, that's been going on. Uh, but we've I tell you this, we had a really good time at the beach the last yeah, couple of days. I'm glad you were that able to get fun. away. Ooh, got my phone on. Did you get on the beach with your, your speedo on? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> Saw several people wearing those. Oh, you said, I wish there was a picture oh, and you didn't gracious. know we knew it was out there. There was, was one speedo. <laughs> there was one moment. Oh, so you said thong. I thought you yeah, said I thong. thong. <laughs> I thought you said you got my phone on. I was like, what the heck? You talking about a phone? <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay, world there games. Was you several, worry about the world games. There were several <laughs> moments where Amanda was like, you've got to Marco Polo, the guys. You've no, got yeah. to. You've so, got and to. thank you for that. And one of them had to do with thongs. Yeah. There's a okay. lot of people. Yeah. That thank you all go, so much. Got a pretty them. funny drunk story. I wasn't drunk, oh, but, but I ran drunk. into other people That's that were, were drunk. It was very sad, actually, what? because they had a, uh, mm. I'd say the kid that was with them was probably anywhere from 11 to 13. He was embarrassed. And he, well, I think he, I don't think he was embarrassed. I think it's just his every day, so and he's he he's learned how to mm, handle it. That's and, uh, sad. It that's is ridiculous. sad, but it was a funny moment with me being in the middle of it. That's sad. Um, but Braden's handling it well? No, it wasn't <laughs> me. No, <laughs> no, no. traumatized. No. Um, good trip. Hey, by the way, we go on these. We'll take these fall break mm-hmm. beach trips. Um, hey, it's hot. Yes, yeah, it's, it's hot. Like it's yeah. it's not it's not normally. I don't think. Maybe if we wait a little later and go. Mm. Normally, maybe it's the end of October. But goodness gracious! Well, Greg, Greg it's really like a summer. Greg it really, really brought it home yesterday when we were talking about high school football, and or his day before. He said, "You realize the teams that don't make the playoffs will never play in the cold. It'll That's be it'll point. be hot every every point. football game. I think it's like two weeks yeah. left in the regular season. Yeah, and it, it ain't even been even kind of cold. No, no. In the game. you might have one or two cold games in the playoffs. Yeah, you might to make the finals. Yeah, you might a have a hoodie game. at the playoffs and all this. But yeah. my goodness, because I remember then, last year the final was freezing. Yeah, yeah, and when it decides to get cold, it it'll do it. But um, but yeah, it is warm. Very I liked warm. it being warm when you're at the beach, but it was it was a, to a point, I guess, even yesterday and Saturday where. Goodness gracious! You got to really watch yourself on the sunscreen, or you're gonna mm-hmm. be in trouble. Yeah, you think in fall? I don't need no sunscreen. I don't know. Boom! Yeah. Who Burn. needs that? Suddenly, I don't know. I just feel like there's. I feel like in the past we've always had a little breeze, or it's a little cooler, or even the water's a little cooler. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't at all. It was like a summer down there. Mm. Whatever. Right. And the dog. By the way, we took the dog, and know, the dog, the dog loved it, mm-hmm. and we actually loved having the dog there. Yeah. Coco were you able to get all the awesome. sand out of the, the dog's we, fur? We, we were. Hair. We were. Um, that was like, wow. Yeah, that was a chore. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. Um, a lot of fun. Yeah. Got a lot of pictures and video and stuff like that. Good deal. So, good to have you back. Thanks, buddy. Good to have Adler back as well. 15 minutes past the hour. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
21 minutes past the hour. It is the Rick and Bubba show. Um, all right, so, uh, you know, we have had a ton of rain in uh, central Alabama, really a lot of the southeast, but uh, it uh, has subsided over the last, uh, what, maybe four or five days or so, and we, we, we've got a break, but we all uh, remember uh, how much rain we had over a short period of time. Uh, yeah, what, was about a week or so ago? Uh, yes, my God. Flooded goodness, like crazy. crazy. Uh, made national news, uh, unfortunately, a loss of life, uh, a- everything. Uh, and it was really surprising because this was about the time that uh, I was going back and forth uh, with my dad in Huntsville a lot, and, and all of a sudden I just get uh, a text from Terry and says, hey, the little hill that's behind the house uh, that is really, to be honest with you, where I'm talking about, it's like half of it is my neighbor's and half of it is mine. And it's probably about half as wide as this room. But the little hill slash berm, whatever, gave way. And, Too much and, water. And slid down. Mm-hmm. And, I'm like, slide. and I'm like, well, this is weird because there, it's not bare. In other words, it has... You know your your standard yeah. hill hill grass or yeah, whatever, yeah, and and s- some have shaved that down and put pine straw and all that. I just keep it weed eaten and it and we move on. So That's it when you it, put it them really on. yeah I have to I have to put spikes on to, to go up there so I don't slide down. Uh, and so anyway, um, 
she sent me and she said, Hey, it, it gave way. And I'm like, what? So I'm like, okay. I'll, well, broke. Yeah. So whenever I get home, I'll, I'll take a look at it. Well then later that afternoon, my neighbor texted me and said, Hey, um, I don't know if you've seen this, but we got us a handle back here. And I don't really care how it looks. I just care about the result of it. And that is that it slid down onto the fence of ours and also to where the subdivision had drainage in the backyard. It slid down onto to like to one side of it. So I'm like, okay, well, let me get home and, and get out there. So I go out there, and then on my side, I start trying to shovel it, thinking I'm a shovel where it slid down, throw it back up there, a lot more and then eventually thought. call somebody and go, I don't know what we need to do. Do we need to spray that stuff that sticks to, to the side of a hill and then it grows back? I mean, I need a professional to look at it. But every time I would shovel it, because it's still wet, it was like picking up cement. You know, it's just and you heavy get a whole crap. shovel and look back and go, "Well, I did nothing. I did nothing." There's and, so much and, here, and there's no easy way. You can't shovel. You, guys, you need some equipment, son. You, you can't shovel, throw, shovel, throw. You got to shovel, hold it, walk around, walk halfway no, up the hill, that's never then gonna, toss that's it. Never gonna I'm work. Di- getting nowhere. Well, you gotta have to get a piece of mechanized equipment in there. Well, here's the problem: the way it's pinned in there, you can't get equipment in there. It's got to be. It's got to be not, manual labor. Like I've got to figure out how to get this out of there. I don't know what to do. I've, how I've wide called is your a gate co- to get to the backyard. Do what now? You have a gate to get to your backyard? Yeah, yeah I guess your standard gate. But the the way I I'll have to, I'll have to show you. the way the the way the uh, the the fence is. It, the fence goes into the hill, so you can't get around oh, in there. Wow. If that makes any sense. And so, anyway, long story short, so that's on me right now. So I called and um, the landscape company that. Uh, uh, did landscaping for the subdivision when they developed it. Go. I called them and just said, hey, could y'all come out here? Just give me an idea. What are we dealing with here? How do we make this work? How do I get this yeah, up? You got a big pile of money. You know, yeah. So, uh, is re- it, does it re- look really bad? Y- yeah. Let me, or I can, is it, if, if I was to come over there, would I go, okay. would I notice it? Or is it that? Is it uh, noticeable? Yeah. Oh, or yeah, is it yeah. just noticeable well, to you because you know what it looked like prior to? Well, I'll tell Speed, you this: you it's it's noticeable to it would be noticeable to you simply because everything else is is grass green. Okay. I got you. And and this is not. Uh, that, that's what it looks like there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You can see yeah. It. So you know, so that's kind of the, that's that's and you y'all see this, that. buddy. You you can't do that by hand. I know. I don't know what to do though. Happen. I don't know. I mean, like, do they spray stuff that sticks to the side and it won't do it anymore? And and why there? It's almost like we got we got to investigate why did this even happen. So the every, next, everywhere else it held. Yeah, and I'm concerned because does I, your I want fence this fixed. run back towards like does it run back this nah. way or is it just right there? Right there. Okay. But you that can't, helps you a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So so from <clears> the top <throat> you can get to it, but you can't from the bottom. So and you know for a bobcat or something, you can need something with a long arm that can pull everything up. Or do you not pull it they up? They may have. Some you know, I just, I just need. To, I don't know. But anyway, the, the story is, is that I've told, I've told the boys, hey, we're about to get three shovels and get out here and get after it. Well, yeah, that, and you, you know what you're doing, peeing in the wind. Really? Rocks, yeah. Well, I wanna, I just wanna have access. It's a lot of rocks too. So yeah, I know. You ain't never gonna. I'd get plant that a tree in that corner and be done with it. Plant a tree in the corner. But now what you're worried? What, what about the next downpour? Yeah, and see, that's what I was going to say is what I'm concerned about is, and we have a little bit of a break uh, in the oh, – it'll um, rain. Yeah, yeah, it will. Um, this here, I'm going to send this to Adler. Sorry, buddy. Um, I'm going to send him a text. But this is uh, – Terry was going out. Terry was going out and then kind of look, looking at it and just trying to that's see on good. a video. Yeah. And you see how there's no way to get equipment to it. And you can see where everything just – yeah, everything well, just slid right, you, down. Is that your yard that you're standing in? Uh, yes. yes, yes. And so I'm so trying that, to I'm trying to get uh, what has slid down. It looks like you know just did that slide into your grass? Like was there some grass there, or did it did it stop before it, it got there? It slid a little bit into the grass. Okay. And and let me tell you something. I worked for I worked for one hour and got about as much as this board done, yeah. a little bit more. Well, you, you but I just I needed a line of drainage because. There was it was still so wet and and you know the water table so high I mean I just needed something to where it could just get to that main yeah. area so Adler's showing it now that's what I'm dealing with right there mm. so where the fence goes uh, that's kind of where uh, the property line is and so that's you your can, neighbor right there his fence yeah that that's the edge of my fence oh. and and so on the other side of that is the drainage that runs behind the houses it's just a little drain that they have so. 
what does this fall does this fall under it? And I've been there for two years, so I don't know if it's. I, I doubt anything's under warranty now. But we we each own uh, that each part of that hill, and then go up, and we own to the road, which is up high. So I don't know what to do. But I guess I, what I'm saying is, do you see all that stuff? How much is a shovel and one person going to? Ain't gonna happen. I just want it off the fence and off the drain. I don't really care what it looks like, but I don't know how to keep it to where it d- doesn't expand. Like, I don't want to look up there the next rain. Every and time it be, rain, it's just going to keep getting higher. Yeah. Piling up more mud, then and thin the whole thing. Falls. What's on the other side of that? Uh, the other side is just, just nothing but just weeds. Woods and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's just, just right flat there, ground. Yeah. Okay. Flat ground up, up to, the, uh, to the main road. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what I'm dealing with uh, just in my world. Uh, you got to get a pro on that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, but, but do I get it off my fence myself and then call a pro? You know, because they're coming out to kind of give me an idea of what it looks like. Are there companies that specialize in this? Yeah, I'm sure. Do I need to go above a landscaping company? Uh, They'll know. They'll probably know who who to get with. You know that stuff that sticks? You know, this is is Terry walking out uh, while (laughs) she's walking out trying to give me uh, the heads up of what's going on. And um, Or you could get some rock and make a waterfall. Yeah, I know. Uh, and she's gonna she's gonna step in mud yeah, and ruin good. her shoes here because she didn't realize it was so soft. Uh, wow, look but at that. Um, yeah, it's just a mess. Mm. Uh, it's just an apps and well, absolute. You and your neighbor mess. got a handle. Yeah, we do, we do. And I told him about that. I was like, buddy, we got a handle right here. And so you can see now behind here how it does and goes. And then there's the drain right there. See, that's what I'm dealing oh, with, boys. Rick and Bubba.
25 minutes until top of the hour. It is the kickoff hour. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. We're full capacity today with staff. Everybody's back, huh? Full staff. Uh, Helmsy Adler back today from a couple of days off. And with those a couple of days off come stories. We just go out, we live, we come back, we report. That's kind of how we do it. Uh, that's a lot of our show prep <laughs> is going out and living, meeting a lot of you and experiencing life. And I don't know why it There's is. There's weird people out there. I, yeah, there is, Greg. But I also don't know why it is. We just can't go anywhere without something happening to us. I don't know what that's about. Uh, you know, you see people, they're going and doing, and nothing ever happens to them. They're not in big handles and a bunch of drama. But for some reason, uh, we are a magnet for that, so we got we got a lot to come back and report. Uh, and you had an encounter with a drunk man. Is well, that right? this story is both uh, entertaining oh. and sad at the same time. But it, but I encountered it and was mm-hmm. right in the middle of it and mm-hmm. had to help at one point. Oh. And so oh, um, this was picking him up. This was Sunday mm-hmm. night. We uh, and I, I'll I say this too. <laughs> what I love about fall beach mm-hmm. trips Where are you going, is sir? you go out there for a couple hours, and when you come in. There's college football on. Oh, there's a there's lot There's playoff happening. baseball yeah, on. Yeah. There's NFL on. And so you <clears> hey, <throat> oh, what's going on here? Let's yeah. watch it. And then you, then you go down to the beach, and technology's so great, you sit there and watch a game if you let, want to. Let me ask you this. Rick gave his uh, <clears throat> some of his beach stories yesterday, and, and he kind of came to the conclusion that it used to be October was the time to go down there. There wasn't as many people or whatever. He goes, that's gone now because there's so many different fall breaks. They all land at different times. And so there was a lot of folks down there, and it was hot and all that. I don't even so. know where did he go. I don't even know where he <laughs> went. Mm-hmm. But um, was it okay with you? But, uh, was no, I don't like that. I don't like that many people. Okay, uh, I will agree with him on that. <laughs> it was it, it was not as bad as it is during the summer. Okay, but it was still packed. Yeah, like the beaches were packed. Um, mm. And again, it felt, and it was because of fall break. And to his point, different people have different times for mm-hmm. fall break, yeah, so yeah. it's always pretty. But, like, traffic was never an issue for us. Like, okay. if I needed to run to the store or something, I was back in mm. five minutes. Right. There and back. With if I wanted to go car. get coffee, back. There and back. It was it right. was quick. So, it's okay. not like you're at night, there's not a ton of traffic or something like that. But the beaches were packed during the day. Well, we had had one of these days where we've, you know, we go out and put our chairs out pretty early when mm. we walk the dog and, and hang out well, and out there in the morning early, watch sunrise if we get up that early. And then we bring everything else when, when we come. And I've I've always been this guy. Amanda and I go back and forth on this. Um, I'm the guy that wants to purchase the chairs they have. Yeah. She wants to bring the chairs. Okay. And I always lose that battle. Okay. And at the end of the trip, I always say, we should have paid for it. I don't care mm-hmm. what it costs. I know. We it shouldn't have to bring these chairs they back put your, and forth. Your umbrella out and everything. I it. think it's worth it. She doesn't. I lose mm-hmm. that battle, and I choose not to fight it. So sometimes the place you're staying has them, and, and they're not in best shape. But sometimes they'll have them in the closet. Yeah. And it'll these were sure enough good ones. And, okay, uh, good. And and but but I but we didn't get them, so I I, I couldn't tell you you know, the experience. Mm-hmm. So we had our chairs out. And so the last thing we would do is we would go watch the sunset every night mm-hmm. and take, uh, that's when a lot of people had gone and we could take, we felt like we could take Coco out there. And, um, by the way, dogs. big major attraction to people was Coco. Mm-hmm. Like she, we probably sold two or three dogs while we were oh, there. Oh, wow. Like we had people asking us, what, what's the breeder's name? Mm-hmm. Where'd you get her? Those kind of things. Look, look at yeah, Coco. That's that. I told uh, Amanda, <clears throat> that's a framer right there. And so, uh, and she handled the beach very well. She's, she just so, she's such a good dog at this mm-hmm. point. I know I'm, we're going to, it's eventually probably going to go the other way. There'll right. be some terrible twos at some point, like right. you have with a kid. Yeah. But sure. it's Co- been awesome. Couple at this piece point. of furniture will be chewed, but other than that. But on the but on the uh, on the yeah. way in, uh, it was this night actually because we were throwing some football and hanging out. That's Braden right there in the that little shot. Mm-hmm. So I'm running around. He's throwing it to me, and so we're we're having a good time. Well, they get ahead of me leaving. And I've got the two chairs. Okay. And we've taken everything else in. Uh, so you're a earlier. Pioneer. <clears throat> so I've got the chairs. Well, of course, you can't believe if it. you got chairs and they're they get way ahead of you, so they're gone. Yeah, I mm-hmm. mean they're they're drag I, I am, <laughs> and so and so I, I put my flip flops on and and uh, I'm at the little deck area and there's a gate that has a code you have to go right. in. You hate that because you got stuff in your hand. I do. Well, that's where this gets interesting. Uh-huh. And so there was a couple probably in their late 30s, early 40s, and they had a kid that was probably I would say 11 to 13. And I noticed the way the dad was putting his flip flops on. Oh, no. We were in trouble. Uh-oh. Like, yeah. hey, you're, and he was in front of me, so I couldn't just go by him. Struggling. 
struggling, really struggling, struggling to get his toes uh, situated in the flip flops. Huh. Then I looked over at the mom and noticed, wow, so sure you're kind of staggering a little bit too. Oh. And said, and so they me? they get up, they nice start walking chair. up the steps, and I'm like, good gracious, can y'all just hurt? I wanted to walk by them, but I didn't want to be that guy. So gotcha. I was just kind of being patient and sitting back, and all of a sudden they get to the gate. Mm. Guys, oh, I no. it could not enter the code on the gate. Mm-mm. Oh, uh, no. Honey, it's it, that's not it. That's not it. Uh-huh. It is it. It's it. Oh, Couldn't even see point. the code. Oh, that now, point. Yes, Imagine it's that bad. Video this. That that bad. Well, then I look over at the the kid, and the kid actually says the following: "Why don't y'all let him do it?" Oh, Talking to me. That's sad. And I said, uh, and I, I again, I don't know, I don't know what kind of drunk we are. Are we a mean drunk? Or mm-hmm. Are we a happy drunk? Sure. So I didn't want to be. I didn't want to cause some big you stir. You to hold his beer while he worked that. And um, <laughs> and I said, uh, I said, no, nah, you're doing a good job. And partly because I wanted to continue sure. to see this yeah. unfold. Uh-huh. Yeah, the family's already left me, so right. why not? I, why not enjoy it? I think it's C two four. Um, is it six? <laughs> oh no! I mean, it was bad. And so it, then, the, did you have second hand? Then the wife said, "Why don't you let him do it?" What's he got? Some special code? Oh no! He don't have a special code. I have the code. Was she closing her eyes like you are? Yes. Yo, buddy, I can't get. Through. No, this was the guy. Oh, the guy. Okay. Sorry. And I said, "Don't have a special code, but I'm pretty sure I can get in the gate." I said that. Oh, I actually have and, a place. Here. And because uh, I can walk, I hadn't been drinking. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm. Uh, you're <laughs> completely drunk. And so, uh, well, um, I I'm gonna give it a shot one more time. At one point, I am not making what does this it up. Matter who opens? It, it was getting dark in his yeah. defense, and it was hard to see. But let me let me tell you something. If you decide to use your flashlight like this, it's not gonna help you. Here, I just get my phone light. Oh, uh, uh-uh. uh, and he, 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 he points point, it back. He, at he had himself. the light pointed back at himself. Well, now he's blinding and he, himself, and he was trying to get. And finally, what in the my world? God, he must have really finally, tried I said, "Hey, let me. I, I can. Let me jump in here. Mm-hmm. I got it." Oh. I'm tired of holding these. I right. was tired of holding the chairs yeah. and had to put one of them down to actually enter mm-hmm. the code. And plus, <laughs> when you enter the code, when you enter the code, <clears throat> you have to turn it a certain way. You can't turn it like it has to turn. You have uh, to turn it right, well, not I mean, left. This thing isn't, isn't, and so, isn't good for people. <laughs> no. So I, no. I actually told him, I said, "Listen, part yeah. of the reason you're entering the code correct, but you're turning it the wrong way. Oh, you, turn it clockwise. Coaching him. Turn it right." It, that's that's the problem. I think you got the code. <laughs> I think you got the code. I just think you're turning it wrong. Blind luck. Yeah. And and so his wife, thank you for helping. You know, oh, she's just as bad. Right, she's really bad. And uh, the poor boy that was there, that's you sad. could tell he he was he's been in this situation mm-hmm. before because he was just kind of seated and silent and waiting on it to you know mm. be done. And finally got the code in, turned it, and opened the door for him, and then went back and got my <clears> chair that I I. I'd put down to, to enter the code. How were they walking? Oh, staggering like you. And thankfully, they were going to a different area. So, okay. like, I could just walk across you didn't them for and dinner? not. No, I could, <laughs> they went to a completely in a different direction. And so I wouldn't, I didn't have to encounter them any longer. Kid directing them, y'all come this way kind of thing? No, but, they knew where they were going. Okay. They just mm. was having trouble getting there. <clears throat> mm. And again, I, I felt, you could tell by some of his comments. I mean, he was really wanting me to, like, hey, you're going to – he was basically looking at me going, if you want the gate open, you're going to have to do it. Right. Like, kind of, I, I've seen this story almost, yeah, before. Yeah, been and, here. And, 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 hey, this gate's not getting open unless you step up and help. <laughs> That's kind of what he was telling Really me. need you right now. He even – he was like, won't you let this, uh, you know, guy do it? He, the, you know, you mm-hmm. could tell he was just sad situation. But, but funny for a few minutes, the fact that they could not talk, they could not walk, dropping everything they had, oh, wow. um, just – and when he started talking about, when he started telling his wife, well, you think he's got some special code? Oh my God. I was mean? like, what in the world? Yeah. Mm-hmm. After, yeah. you, after you helped him, did and, they tell you, and hey, I, think I love the, you? I think the final you, the final thing, when he had his flashlight, <laughs> he thought he had figured it out and yeah. was going to get it for everybody and be the hero. Yeah. And he was flashing the flash. <laughs> you moron. Y'all, the fact he was putting yeah. it back on himself, it's, and it's, now he's looking into the sun. That's what really hard to yeah. type the code. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see a thing. So. Why is it so bright out here? <laughs> they must have been a daylight to dark kind of deal uh-huh. on that beach with oh. just alcohol. Burnt? Alcohol. Were burnt? they burnt? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah.
I'm there. I know exactly what you're dealing with. Their sunglasses. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know exactly where they're. Really struggle getting his flip flops on too. <laughs> that's when it. That's when I noticed something was going uh, on. I'm like, I better here. stay with this. <laughs> Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba.
you so much for tuning in to the Rick and Bubba Show. It's the kickoff hour. Rick and Bubba join us right after the top of the hour. Adler, Helmsy, both back, uh, full staff, uh, and we thank you for being with us. Uh, this portion of the show is brought to you by MyPillow.com. You know, Terry and I were talking about our pillows last night. Uh, I missed mine. At yeah. The beach. Did not test it. Always the mistake I made. Mm. I never pack yep. my pillow. Really? That's a – come on, It's Elmsy. a rookie mistake, and Good I didn't night. do it, and I struggled to you, sleep. You know better than that. That was hurting a little bit. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I settled in watching some Red Sox last night yeah. and, you know, trying to stay awake, long day. She settles in. And uh, she said, I love my pillow. Because, you know, how she got she gets My a, pillow. How about getting ready for bed? I don't know what it is, but she gets she gets all under the cover. She's all excited. She's ready for bed. Had a long day. And that discussion came up. I love my pillow. I just thought I'd let y'all know that. Okay. I was just thinking about my mother. I was to know where you were going with that. Well, I mean, we're going to sleep. I'm watching the Red Sox. Uh, MyPillow.com uh, is where you go. They've got all kinds of stuff. Just added some bathrobes, too. Uh, Sleepwear, yeah, some quilts. Uh, they have an ever-growing product lineup, uh, an array of great colors, styles that are made 100% in the U.S. Uh, they've, um, they've got a lot happening. And here's how you unlock those savings at MyPillow.com. Click on Radio Listeners, and then it's a little square, and then use promo code Bubba, and you're going to save 30%. That same promo code will also get you MyPillow slippers and whatever else, you know, sizes, styles, colors, at 50% off. The Giza Dream Sheets are also 50% off. The premium uh, bed pillows are $29.98, a $40 savings. To unlock all those savings, again, it's my store, then click, uh, then at mypillow.com, and then click the radio listener square, and then promo code Bubba. Very easy to do. And remember, all my pillow products come with a 60 day money back guarantee and warranty, so you have nothing to lose. Again, go mypillow.com, radio listener square, use promo code Bubba. To unlock those savings, you can find a, a link at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors button. Where are y'all at on nutmeg? Uh, well, uh, and that for uh, use it in a. I'll tell you how I came across it. Came across, yeah. Well, uh, well, eggnog. Uh, we, 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 my eggnog? we discussed nutmeg. I don't know. I've never put it in there. And no, you're I think probably it's right. part of yeah. eggnog. I'll tell you mm-hmm. how why I came across this. Okay. This was accidental. Is I was um, there was a there was a coffee place uh, mm-hmm. very close to where we were at, and right. so um, I, I, I would get me a cup of coffee, okay, and like I do here, you know, just. Yeah. You know. And I thought I was grabbing cinnamon. They didn't look. I just go ahead and put my uh-huh. sweetener and my cream, and I'm you know doing my coffee deal, a little uh-huh. dash of honey, and I think I'm pulling cinnamon out, and I and that I just egg. toss it in there. And I, I fill the cup up with coffee, and I stir it up, and I start to walk in, walking back to the car, and I, and I taste it, and I'm like, well, what's that taste? That's different. Hmm. And so the next day did the same thing, and I realized you just you put nutmeg in your coffee yesterday. That's what mm-hmm. you like. Mm-hmm. That's, what, that's what that was in your coffee. Mm-hmm. And so that was the first day I did it, and so ever since then I've been putting it, I've been putting nutmeg back in my coffee interesting and uh and i just wondered where y'all were at on nutmeg and it was complete it accident. is uh, uh in eggnog people who spice it spice it with well, mm-hmm. well nutmeg hmm. and eggnog. I, I i was impressed I, i've always seen it sitting there and and never gave it anything because the fact that it says nutmeg i don't mm. want to put in my coffee right and turns out i really like it <laughs> so you love nutmeg <laughs> you like it or like saying it no, I like I like okay. it. It's very good. I like I said, I've I've done it ever since and probably will do it today. Mm. Put nutmeg in my coffee. Oh, a couple of stories here that just jump out at me. Um William Shatner, not ninety, he's ninety, y'all. Ninety. Says he's deeply disappointed about the delay to become the oldest person in space, but is still excited to head into orbit aboard Blue Origins rocket on Wednesday. It looks like what is the delay? Is that weather? That What's going yeah. on with the delay? Uh, well, it's yeah, it? yeah. Uh, high winds pushed it to Wednesday, uh, but um, that must be why the White Sox and Astros didn't play yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I, I you know I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. I was going to get an update. I, I, I knew the the Giants Dodgers update and the Red Sox. I have update to ask you something about update, but the, not that one. a certain Astros pitcher that we both are friends with. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to be this guy. But are you texting him at all during this? Not right now. No, leaving him alone. Well, he seems to like my text. Okay, well, so you. He's either him. faking it or yeah. or yeah. whatever. Yeah, I wasn't um, going to reach out to him right now. Um, 
Well, do you think he? I bet he talks to other people. Maybe he wants to hear I don't from you. I just dialed in. I do you don't think know. I'm being a bit by reaching I mean, out? I don't know. So I mean, do y'all text a lot? Or all of a sudden, now you text? No, me? we text a lot. Okay. Well, well not then, a lot, but like every couple of weeks. Yeah. Come about uh, you can just say it. Kendall Graveman. Yeah. And yeah. and so he's a closer for the Astros, and so he's pitched a couple of. Uh, of he he and I even was honest. I texted him. I said, "Hey, look, you gave Speedy and I a heart attack. Thank you." Yeah. I said, uh, "Hey, but but I but I you know I end it with, hey, I don't want to fight. They don't call you Digger for nothing. You know that's <laughs> his that's his nickname, Digger. Right. And he grinds it out. Mm-hmm. And so um, easy. Then I thought when I texted him, I thought so. If is this? It was like right after the game. What? Like I'm talking like he hadn't been off the mound five minutes. You need to whoa. And and I thought so. I'm being a bit. But goodness gracious, he texts me back like two two minutes after I text well, him. You know, he's, in, and, he's the nicest thing ever. So well, he yeah, is. He's text he you is. Back. But sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes it may be a week before he gets back to me. Oh. Correct mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong on this. Went from there to the Cubs, then the Mariners, and now the Astros. Yeah. Didn't do I, a whole lot for the Cubs because he's in a rehab stage. Right. Uh, um, yeah, because he, he had, and was pitching really well long. for the Mariners, and I, why they got rid of him? Of course, he's probably loving it because mm-hmm. they're doing really. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're, <laughs> hey Astros, they yeah. got a nice little atmosphere there going on too. Yeah. Uh, let let me just tell you this too. So and I'm I being a bit. I'll stop texting. Well, no, Kendall, I'm gonna stop texting you <laughs> no. after ball games. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, Greg, I just encouraging him is all I'm doing. Okay, buddy, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, I tell you what. Speaking of pitchers. Um, I saw a really cool story that had to do with Todd Jones and Garrett Whitlock, who throws uh, for the Red Sox, and how they met each other uh, while both uh, rehab. And I think uh, Garrett with uh, Tommy John, and then this is when Todd hurt his knees. Blew out his knees at the beach, knees, wasn't whatever. it? Was he at the beach when that happened? Yeah, he's in yeah. Miami. Miami, yeah. he ripped the, the and, um, quad muscles. And, and they became friends and, and, and stay in touch, and Todd – mentors him a lot or whatever. Yeah. It's a really cool read, and uh, Michelle, his wife, had posted it, and I started reading on it a little bit, and um, I just thought it was kind of neat that, you know, yeah. uh, that he uh, was able to develop that friendship and stuff. And I'm sure when Todd, kept, you know, texted him, he's not a bip or anything because, you know, he helped him a little bit. Yeah, but, that's true. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I helped Kendall much. <laughs> but uh, Garrett Whitlock <laughs> for the, sure uh, like for the Red Sox as well. <laughs> But Garrett uh, actually even brought up Todd and said, "Yes, he, you know, he he's one of my go tos." Uh, but it was just a neat story because I, I never would have put them together, yeah. had no idea, and they actually met, just you know, trying to you know, Garrett was coming out of Tommy John and and uh, Todd the knee issue, so it was always kind of it was pretty cool. They probably they probably actually brag like when one of them receives a text from the other, mm-hmm. they probably turn to the person in the locker room next to him and go, hey, Todd just texts me. <laughs> Unlike Kendall with me, he just gets through it, and he's like, God, he's a bip. Yeah. You know? And by the way, the pictures, I know. I, I told Amanda, I was like, send Speedy that. Send, oh, the, any dog pictures, mm-hmm. Coco? Yeah. I, that Because I know that's your world, too. You love this breed of dog. <laughs> and so Amanda even said in one <laughs> Ooh, of her texts. We text, all got the same dog. Listen, Amanda <laughs> even said in one of her texts to uh, to Speedy, hey, just so you know, I'm not being a bip here. It's Michael that's being a bip. Yeah, He's telling me to send right. these She pictures. did say that, but yeah. I'm fine with it. I yeah. mean, I lo- like, I'd like to meet Coco. We, we need to get you got yours pictures. and ours. Yeah, yeah. Rick and Bubba.
Six minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba show. 866, we be big as our number. Uh, much to do on another edition of the Rick and Bubba show. We'll unpack it again today. We start this hour with the national anthem. It is eight minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba show, and we are so thankful that you are here. Team Rick and Bubba goes back to full strength today. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, and Eddie Van Adler are all back in the mix. So Team Rick and Bubba ready to go. They all gave you a kickoff hour on the Rick and Bubba radio network, the podcast archives. Live or archived on our YouTube channel. Also streaming on the Rick and Bubba 24-7 Tune In app. All the Rick and Bubba you can stand. Yep, the uh, Tune In app gives you the live show streaming. Uh, if you get outside of the Rick and Bubba radio network, you don't have an affiliate, you can do that live. And it also gives you 24-7 Rick and Bubba best of moments from the last 27, almost 28 years of Rick and Bubba. So uh, there he is, uh, the pride of Cedar Springs, Alabama. Most of you know him better as Silver Tongue One, the man with the golden voice, professional lunch eaters, man of the year, the inventor of pizza and a cup, Shakespeare's worst nightmare, and the master of the King's English. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Bill Bubba Bussy! How about you, Bubba? How about it, Rick Burgess? Friends, neighbors, associates everywhere, come on in. It's going to be a party. Yeah. So, Bubba, the, uh, the email uh, yesterday, uh, social media, people asking why no call from uh, Alabama's biggest fan, Dickie Nadmeyer, yesterday. <clears throat> uh, you know, we don't press that 
uh, if it's um, it's rare, but if, uh, if if Alabama loses a game, which is very very rare, it's hard to say. Uh, we do uh, we do not we don't go into an injured. You know, we were learned we learned as a kid if a dog's been hit by a car and he's over in the corner and he's trying to heal himself. No yeah. matter how much you may love that dog, and he's whimpering. Yeah, you don't yeah. rush in because no. a, a hurt dog will bite. Yep. yep. So and usually, honestly, any attempts to find Mister Nadmeyer after a Bama <laughs> loss is a waste of your time. Uh, he, you know, because you know most y'all may not know this. There's stages of grief that Alabama fans go through. Oh. And the first one is complete and utter silence. <laughs> yeah, uh, got to deal with it. Yeah, so so I, I, we are going to try today, and if we can get him on the phone today, we will. Yeah, mm. you you got to give time to heal, Ray. You better have the, uh, the delay. You, you got to go through what the seven steps of grief. Yeah, is that right. Yeah, and based seven. yeah, and based on John Gruden's story today, we may not want to take his call. But, yeah, uh, right, but we'll, uh, right. but most of uh, the Nadmire right, stuffs out there for the world to see. But. Yeah, we uh, we've got a lot of updates. John Gruden is no longer the coach of the Raiders. Wow, uh, due to emails Canceled, and comments that he has made over the past ten years. Ten right. years, yeah. um, which will bring up a bit of a debate. I think we need to talk about not saying what he said should have been said or shouldn't have been said, but doesn't he have the right to say it? Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, At one time, that was a yes, by the way. We had uh, the VP yesterday talking about mm. science and space mm-hmm. to a bunch of young students. Wow. Turns out they were actors. It was all yeah. a production. No shock uh, there. Well, I thought you were living is, in fake uh, one. Yeah, this is the lady that should be taking care of the border crisis, which, by the way, with all that we have had there, and as bad as it has been, it's nothing compared to what's coming. We got 60,000 people headed to the border. Uh, and why do be you be there sometime around Christmas? And why do you think that is? Why because you, the last thirteen thousand got in for free. Uh, they broke the law and was just Here allowed to come on in. Yeah. So uh, we got that. <clears throat> Britney Spears is going to write a new book. You'll love the topic of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, once again, showing that she has all of her act together. Yeah. I still look. She's a grown up. If she is crazy, uh, let her be crazy on her own and spend her own money. Uh, but she knows uh, how to stay in the headlines. I'll give her she, that. She she is not helping the case that she has got her act together. I'll say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got the launch pushback. Uh, Blue Origin. Uh, William Shatner. <laughs> Captain Kirk, who will be the oldest uh, ever to be shot into space. Here we go. It's, it has to be the best uh, fun ride, uh, carnival ride we've ever had. Mm-hmm. Uh, Going to be delayed till tomorrow, but it will happen during the show. So we'll uh, we'll get a look at that. And we got a we got a weird update yesterday, uh, and we'd covered this story when it came out. The USFL is going to USFL. try to reorganize for a spring it. league, and we heard yesterday that they want to play in a bubble in Birmingham, I, not a dome bubble, but I, uh, all but the games all the games in one like city. the NBA did yeah. the, during the pandemic. But will that be <clears> necessary in the spring? Uh, college football's not doing that. No, uh, NBA's not doing that this year. Does it say whether Birmingham has a team? I was confused. That, that, I was too. That it, it was a very confusing story yesterday. Yeah. And, yeah. He, and text we got. Uh, very we, confusing. We'll right. try to talk to uh, – It left me speechless. Mr. Mm-hmm. Sports, Gene Hallman, at some point. But I don't think they committed to Birmingham having a team, but they were fishing to see if Birmingham would host the bubble. Because they mentioned the stadiums and they mentioned right. the, mm-hmm. the, a few of the other w- classic ones that were in the original right. s- showboats or s- whatever. The generals and some of those. Yeah. So uh, very confusing. Uh, I understand that, uh, you know, when you talk about a production of this big, uh, the folks that run the stadiums are obviously have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, things they have to look at if they can, can even host that or want to host it. So uh, – from my understanding, 80% of the games will be at the new stadium, Protective Life, right? Is that mm-hmm. the name of it? And uh, 20% would be at the old Gray Lady oh, Legion Field. My so we'll uh, we'll try to see how Why? that shakes out today. Greg, I guess, if I if guess, you're on Southwest, don't worry about it. You ain't going anywhere anyway. That's true. Just enjoy uh, enjoy your chair you're sleeping yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Good night. Look yeah, at that. And, and, of course, you've probably seen the – DC comic Superman story. But yeah, how about that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, oh, yeah. I don't even want to yeah. When did comic That's book so, characters do? I, I don't know. I, I don't even want to get I don't even know what to say about it. I don't know enough about that comic world. All I know is about the movies they have, and that's mm-hmm. a different animal. <clears throat> yeah, completely. The, the, the comic book world, that's a different. That's a strange Like, box. I think this is supposed to be, like, 
the original Superman and Lois Lane's son, <laughs> it who's, is. who's now yeah. the new Superman. So we can do it. Well, right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to hear John Gruden talk about it. Uh, well, he, he he did a couple of emails. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he so, actually did. By the way, on the Southwest Airline thing, um, I know we ran the list of all the things we'll cover, then we'll jump in, but before we go to break, I actually heard a family being interviewed, and hear the dad, because he sounded like us. He, <laughs> so frustrated. He said, handles, tried, he said, just tried to come to Atlanta to go to a wedding. Trying to get back yeah. to Arkansas, they tell us they canceled flight. He goes, now they wasn't going to give us a, a, a refund on it. He goes, till they saw our attitude. He, <laughs> he, 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 goes, he goes, by the time I was done, we got a refund. I mean. You mean to tell me your first thing they tried was not even refund your money? So you don't have a flight, and oh, by the way, you yeah. paid for it, you're not getting your money back. He said, well, that, somebody had to pull it out. He said, well, he said they, well, they tried that. Till yeah, they, I till showed they, my till they, till they saw our attitude, then I got my money back. Mm. Of course, he still has no way to get back to Arkansas, but that's fine. Yeah. Uh, and why is it only Southwest? Nobody else is having to. Uh, Spirit. Spirit had some. Oh, yeah. no. We'll be back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
22 minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba Show. Thank you for being with us. Will of Meat back in play. A call from um, Super Bama fan Dickie Nadmeyer expected today after a shocking loss. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. All still to come. Will of Meat, uh, as I said, uh, can happen at any time on the program today. Uh, be standing by for that. Uh, well, uh, Johnny Gruden, uh, the latest victim of the cancel culture. Uh, and um, as you said, Bubba, it, it really is irrelevant whether you agree or disagree with the things that John Gruden was saying to people privately in his, in his private emails that were discovered in, a, in, a, in a, really a pursuit of the Washington football team. Um, whether you like what he said, agree with what he said, disagree with what he says, you are repulsed at what he said, the, the, the bigger topic is doesn't he have the right to say it, uh, and especially in private conversations with people? Uh, and then you may say, well, I don't like his character, and I don't like the way he sees the world, and I don't like his language. That's perfectly fine. You can certainly do that. Uh, you have the right to do that and to think less of John Gruden. But should John Gruden's life be destroyed over comments like this, of him just giving his opinion on things over the last decade um, of his life? Rick, yeah, it, it, it really brings to a bigger picture. You, you can agree, disagree, uh, that same conversation, those same comments go on all over the country every day. Um, but the point is, if you get into mind control uh, where you're going to tell everybody who they like, who they dislike, no, you don't have to agree with them, or you can agree with them, but it's your right to do so. Uh, these were private comments. Uh, again, I think uh, what is scarier to me is the fact that someone can be canceled like this over private emails. They, No one on the Raider team is going, I'm being mistreated because exactly. I'm this or that. Matter of fact, the Raiders have the only openly gay player in the NFL right mm -hmm. now. And he, Gruden he, came out and supported, and he's not yeah. he's not complaining. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think it's just uh, it's just crazy, the fact that that you can shuffle through emails, some of them ten years old, and lose a job that he's making what ten million a, a year on now. Yeah, it was a ten year, hundred million dollar. He was deal. four wow. years into the ten year deal that was a hundred million. Uh, he he saw the Raiders through trying to wrap up their time in Oakland, which was not very positive with a lot of people, you can imagine. The transition to Las Vegas, the transition to a new stadium, and they finally are acting like maybe they got their act together. They started out 3-0. They have lost a couple of games, but they're still above 500. And uh, you just hate to kind of see that disturbance in that organization right now. Uh, Gruden, when he was a, a commentator, was very well liked. Remember Tennessee tried to hire him? I mean, he was yep. highly thought of. Yep. His name uh, came up every job. Yeah, every job, pro or college. Right. Yeah. Uh, he's a colorful character. I think that's why a lot of people in sports like him. Uh, I feel sorry for uh, Frank Caliendo now because he's not going to be able to do him right. in his, uh, in his skits. Yeah. It's left Cali uh, Caliendo with a, with a, a vacancy for a new impression. <laughs> you, you, you know, th this is the kind of thing, though, that the founding fathers uh, wanted to get away from where – in grand old England back in the day, uh, you couldn't have your opinion on anything because if it was anti the king or something the king didn't like, the king would find you and lop your head off for it. So we're not using the guillotine or the axe axeman now, but the, the cancel culture is basically doing the same thing. Well, you, every one of you, I know Greg and Bubba have both made this point, and I'm sure the other guys, we all, we all agree on this. It, it goes back to this again. You just gave an example, Bubba. No matter how John Gruden may see the world and his opinions and his preferences and his likes and dislikes, he, he really should only be fired or be forced to resign if those opinions of his cause him to mistreat people unfairly. And, and there's no evidence of that uh, in his coaching whatsoever. It's obvious that he really was upset that he didn't think a team should be pressured to draft an openly gay player just for some political or political movement reason, but it's obvious he doesn't have any problem with having a player on his team that he coaches and plays that is openly gay. Yeah, if, if he, he did, he would have cut it. Yeah, so if his opinion about the way Fisher was treated by the NFL pressuring him mm -hmm. to draft uh, Sam, is it mm -hmm. Sam's, or, Sam? Is it an S or, yeah. or singular? 
Uh, and, and look, it's, and Michael it's, Sam. it's okay to have traditional family values. You it have is. that right to have that uh, opinion. That's not something that should make you an outlaw. Right, but but he didn't like the pressure of it, and he certainly doesn't agree <clears throat> with that lifestyle. But but he never mistreated anyone that's because right. of that belief, and and that's the part that, like Bubba said. Uh, if you, if, I'm, you know, I heard uh, our pastor say this one day. He goes, "I know that you think I'm exaggerating." He said, but the, if you continue to see the world, and I'm not saying John Gruden is coming from a biblical worldview. I'm not saying that. But it's just to the bigger point of, of Bubba. He has an opinion. It may not have, not have anything to do with anything spiritual. But is that he said, the more that you start living your life saying, this is how I see the world, he said, people are going to start thinking you're more crazy and a loon. And he yeah. goes, he goes. I know you think I'm exaggerating right now. Mm-hmm. He said, "There's people that think what we believe. If you believe what the Bible says in this church, they think all of you and I am crazy." You know what I mean? So it's it's that. But like Bubba said, it, it, "It's okay for someone to say, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I just have a point of view that differs from you, mm-hmm. but I don't mean you any harm." Has John Gruden mistreated anyone because of the way he sees the world? Not, not that we see in his record. No, uh, and like you said, Bubba, these were not comments. He was, you know, because some people say, well. When you go out and you use your influence to say these things, it's hurtful and it makes other people, you know, be mean to people because you influence people. He wasn't even doing that. Mm-mm. These are just conversations he was having privately uh, that have been discovered and really an attempt to, you know, uh, bring uh, bring down the Washington football team. Yeah, uh, you look, know, part, yeah, a, a large, nobody was investigating John Gruden. A mm-hmm. large part of this was even said before he was the coach of the Raiders. And do you think oh, that when that, the, we first started having a female referee no, that there no. weren't some people who were skeptical of it? Yeah. And probably said something mm-hmm. about it. And you know what? She may have proved herself, and the same people may tell you, they, hey, she's pulling it off. Right. But because they originally thought it wasn't a great idea doesn't make them a bad person. But it, You can disagree with them, yeah, but, but the, they're not harming anyone. The point of all this is we have people whose lives are being destroyed, and they're being canceled, and their ability to make a living is being taken away simply because they have points of view that are not allowed. Not actions, just points of view. Yeah, yeah. They I, haven't I mistreated want, us so. I, I don't want the thought police to be out and rounding up anybody like it's Schindler's List. Okay. Right. I just, I don't. It, it, and it really doesn't matter. You can have your opinions on whatever. I, I'm, I'm really concerned about where our country's headed with this. We'll be back. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba.
35 minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba Show, 866-WE-BE-BIG. Relief Factor and the Rick and Bubba Show have been teaming up for years together. And uh, it is a great product. Uh, I use it every day. It uh, really, really helps. And I love getting the emails from all of you out there. They're saying, hey, this has really been a game changer for me. Uh, and here's one of those emails right now. It's from John uh, out of the free state of Florida. He says, for about six weeks now, uh, I've been taking Relief Factor. He said, I'm not uh, wanting to get caught up in trendy things. But after hearing about it on the show, um, uh, I finally decided I'd give it a try. After four days, the pain in my knees went away. I mean, literally, it is gone. The constant pain that I've been dealing with, uh, uh, you know, it had, even trying to, you know, go to sleep, it would hurt just laying there. That that pain is completely gone. He said, I was taking 800 milligrams of ibuprofen three to four times a day. Uh, it was getting so bad, so I'm glad I found this product. Uh, hopefully, you'll, you'll have a similar experience that, that John and many others have had. Uh, you can find out by getting a three-week supply. In three weeks, you'll know whether these four botanicals are all natural work for you or not. And you can get yours by going to relieffactor.com. That's relieffactor.com. Or you can go to rickandbubba.com and look under the sponsors button. So uh, down goes Gruden. Uh, he will now resign as the Raiders head coach uh, because uh, he uh, doesn't believe that uh, uh, they should be forced uh, to, uh, uh, to draft players uh, of alternative lifestyles for political reasons. Uh, he's not a huge fan of uh, women being officials in, the, in professional football. He was, he was at least uh, uh, worried that uh, this was not about merit. It was about uh, some sort of uh, movement. He also doesn't like people kneeling for the national anthem, uh, and um, he thinks that uh, Roger Goodell makes bad decisions that's hurting football. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, 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 since, and he also didn't think the players' union guy, he made fun of the size of his lips. Right. So, um, and these were emails between 2010 and 2018 yeah. when he was a commentator for ESPN. Yeah, all emails uh, that, that were privately. And so his views on these things and the <clears> fact <throat> that he used some, some, uh, some words that are now no longer allowed, uh, he, is, he cannot be a coach. In, the, in, in professional and again, football. Or a back, commentator. And, again, at this point, not one complaint from a player coach that's mm-hmm. worked with him. Nope. There's been no one that said he treated uh, females that worked at the Raiders poorly. Uh, no one said he treated the openly gay player poorly. Um, no, 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 no sign whatsoever that he's racist or bigoted uh, to all the, the overwhelming majority of players in professional football, which are black. Uh, none of this in his character has ever produced itself but he was saying these things probably to the other people, so somewhere in his heart, the way he saw things must be done. Not the way he behaved, yeah. but just the way he talked in some private emails. So uh, just take a note of that. That's the yeah. world in which we now live. This is John Gruden we're talking about. Oh, no. mm-hmm. And I bet if you pulled a lot of people's private emails probably over the past so. 10 years, I bet you could find some offensive in it. Well, it, because remember, Greg, uh, you got to remember that what is declared offensive is a moving target. Well, let yeah. me tell you, when it's not, it, it, yeah. look, look, that, what you say right. today it's may true. be fine. Absolutely. It may be, the, think mm-hmm. about this, what, how offensive will it be in 2031? Right. If these That's emails were talking came out about. in 2010, yeah. nobody would probably even said a word. That, yeah. that, you need to listen to what the guys are saying right now. That's true. You're, you're saying, well, you got to know the climate, what you're living in. I totally agree with that. There's things we don't do on the show now because of the climate we're in. But there's things that uh, that were not considered to be yeah. bad form, then. you know, 10, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. And the problem is the society you're living in now will go back to a time when what you did wasn't considered offensive and right. declared offensive by today's standards. Yep. So that, that's the part you that's the part that you got to watch. Yep. But what I would like to see happen, which is not going to happen, and that's why this is continuing. It would be nice to see someone in this case, the Oakland Raiders organization, come out and go, "No, he's not resigning." We, we stand behind him, whatever. He's our coach. Now, but, but his, they're not going to do it. They no, bow every no. single time. Now, no. in his statement, he said it was his decision. That right? ain't the point. I'd say, I'm sorry, I'm not letting you resign. Right, yeah. You know? I, yeah. I get that. I'm just saying. But I'm he saying, said I he, guarantee you, they went to him and said, look, we got to clean this uh, you, up. You you're need right. To step down. Yeah, you're right. There's nothing <clears throat> that John Gruden has done that's more offensive than the owner of the Raiders' haircut. That's a fact. <laughs> now, if we want to talk about things that need to be changed. Yeah, I will admit, I think that's more offensive today than anything. Yeah. Guys, I saw an interview with him, yeah. right. and they asked him about it, and he acted like he didn't realize his hair would look funny. Right, you're making that <laughs> I'm <thing>. serious. <laughs> yeah. Now you're yeah, I swear. Greg. He was like, well, I mean, you know, well, it's easy to fix, and it's – and they were like, because they they were making, they even showed Jimmy there, Fallon them making fun of him. It's like he don't get it. There, there's been several people that kind of had that response when that was brought. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Well, and I know that these people that have this kind of stuff don't work in the same climate. Oh, in which we no, my Let gosh, me tell you something. No. Look at that right there, Bubba. If we, if anybody on this show showed up, <laughs> y'all, if anybody <laughs> on this show showed up with that hairdo, what would what what, wow. what what would your day be like in here? Unbelievable. What, what would the show be like, Rick? Would, I, it, would the show ever talk about another topic? The entire, the entire so. five hours. I've got secondhand embarrassment just looking at yeah. that, and he's all the way in Nevada. I know. <laughs> and. I know. Uh, you know. But I'm serious. I wish y'all could see his face. He was like, "What?" Yeah. I was like, "No. How do you not know?" Hmm. Greg, that's unbelievable. <laughs> well, you saw like we said many times on the show, the mirror didn't get the job done. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I know he must. Yeah, like right. It. Yeah. <laughs> so what? Uh, what will Gruden do now? I don't know what well, he can do. There's nowhere he can go. He's a he's he's, he's a mark man. Yeah, he, he can't is. even do commentary or anything. My goodness, he's a horrible person. And and we make I fun. Th- I mean, you just said we it. talk. I don't think Caliendo can. do I, that, that was what I was going to say. That's where I was going. Where are you going? Yeah. Uh, except make a quick joke about emails and then move on. Yeah, I don't know because of the topics. If he can, it's, yeah. This remember, Bubba. This is these topics are these you, are yeah. These are topics you don't go. Mm-mm. I mean, you don't touch them. You're not allowed. Poor Frank. He's a lot because he's he. That's a big part of his uh, act now. I, I want you to think about what we're saying. Not allowed. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Mm. You, you realize how creepy that is. Yeah, that, there's creepy. that hair again, Bubba. How in the world? Yeah, how in the world. They showed him the other day. At one of the games, I was like, "Wow, y'all!" It's man, almost that's like, not even that's not even a good Dutch boy haircut. How about this? If we're you, gonna, you know, what, I mean that that looks like you didn't even have a good bowl. And on to there. be honest, I, I, here I go. This is <laughs> I may be getting trouble being John Gruden being mean, but he ain't a good looking guy anyway. At least you could do is get a hairdo to try no, to help right. you a little. I would, I, mean, I, that, I would put as much hair on that. Head I mean, as you're you down can. ten to yeah. nothing anyway. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you you don't yeah, need to top right. it off with a bowl haircut on top of your weird looking head. <laughs> what I'm about <laughs> there what, it I'm, is. what I'm about to say may God, be. he's ugly. Let's just call he's ugly guy, and it, to add to it, he has ugly hairdo. Right. <laughs> I think his hair makes him uglier than he really is. Right. And he's pretty ugly. Right. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Well, is he this. ugly, Greg? He, well, he is. I mean, <laughs> oh, he's anybody. Like Greg, how about this? I, I'm pretty sure that he's a white uh, male. Uh, who's, oh, I can make fun of him. Who's then. heterosexual? You can say whatever you want. Yeah, yeah you, Greg, you, you can push him on his own problem. Oh, sure. Sure. You, 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 you could run up and stab him saying, and still be have a job next next week. That's okay. true. I'm just saying that maybe Rick. you would go look. I can't control this, but I can't control my haircut. Well, look look at his hair, and, and it's as if he said, "I'm going to try to give myself the worst possibility I can." Greg, that hair, I'm, well, here, here okay, comes let's, let's he makes Moe's hair back. look good. Let's take this step back. Hmm. You're the cosmetologist, okay, that's cutting that hair. And d- do you not go, hey, let, let me try Let me try something. Oh, yeah. Let me yeah. try a part of Let me get this colander. Or does he cut his own? Well, in the mirror. It, it doesn't it, look it, like it, it looks takes like, a lot of skill. You yeah, could. it looks like All you need a bowl. A, a scissors to that. Greg, that ain't even a good bowl. It's really no, I'm seen, not sure what I've it seen is. people with a little Dutch boy where they cut the wind out like <laughs> yeah, the barn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've seen the Captain, bowl cut. Yeah. 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 I've yeah. seen the bowl cut. That is neither one. Right. I'm it's, not sure what like, that is. Why is the, it looks why? like Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, I'm preparing my that's what it looks like. It's that it's that I think I think Lloyd's is a better cut. See, yeah. Moe's Mo's covering the, the forehead a little bit. Right, guys, it doesn't look it, it like, I, I don't know, is that his real hair? It doesn't look like it's he's balding. So why this haircut? I know. We got to the talk. We got, does he you have some like, weird cow leg or something? He spent all kind of money on that jacket. Now it showed Petey's pictures of him when he was younger, and he didn't have that. Oh, I don't come know on. You, you, you can put a part in that and let it grow out a little bit. By yeah. the way, mm-hmm. I'm preparing myself to say, which I know could be Carrot debated. Carrot says that's a bad haircut. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I believe that this may be the worst haircut I've ever seen. Oh, it is. Now, and that's saying a lot. I've seen some really bad. Yeah, bad that's that's yeah. I'm talking about yeah. Trump's hair. At least there's days when you go, well, you know what, today – that hair never has a day where everybody goes, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You no, never I mean, think Trump's is good, but you go, it ain't that bad no, today. I, but at least there's days where you can look at Trump's hair and, and not, it not, be, not be completely mesmerized by it. Yeah. The, the, I can't even think a thought when I say no, this guy's hair. I'm staring at it the whole time. I, I, what, he, could be, he, could be, he could tell me, hey, there is a lizard that is highly poisonous <laughs> crawling on your shoulder, and I'd never hear it. Because <laughs> all I would be is just looking at his looking at his hair. I'd be like, I don't know what you're <laughs> you saying. You went with the poisonous lizard. <laughs> yeah, look, right. yeah, look, and as a freckled guy, yeah. I'm just going to tell you, I mean, I, I would hide that freckled forehead a little bit. I Rick, know, slap that off your shoulder. It's going to bite you. And if it bites you, it's sure death. <laughs> yeah. And I would just be staring <laughs> at his hair. I'd never hear it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right in the neck. Yeah. Like, what? Slap There's it off your shoulder, reason. Rick. I can't hear you. I'm just staring at your hair. Mm-hmm. It's the worst hair yeah. I think I've ever seen. It's bad. Did he, did he lose a bet or something? I don't know. And I mean, this man, 
it got, runs got, the right. NFL franchise. All right. All right. Here's how. Oh fun no, it. So, got, got, so the Raiders. got the Raiders. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, go. Uh, I'm gonna go this franchise far. Franchise with a, a new stadium. They call the Death Star. You yeah. know. You I know. mean, how much better could you have it? Now he didn't have a coach today, but let's talk. Right, let's right. talk about this. Uh, All right, special teams coach. I'm gonna. That was a little rough on him during. You gotta hear him. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go this far. Didn't give him much at all. Greg, whoever thought that guy was a bad guy. Well, you know. Well, you know what? You're on your own now. Dad's not cutting your hair. I think Dad made him cut the hair. Show us that Dad was wrong. I'm going to suggest a scenario that I think is the only possibility. Now, it's out there. Okay. But it's the only possibility. For him to have the Raiders and to have the wealth and everything he has, he made a deal with the devil himself. Yes. And the devil said, and I'm going to tell you something, you're going to wear your hair like this or I'll take it all away. Yeah. Oh. And so this is something he has to do <laughs> to keep right. his position. You can have wealth okay. and fame, but you're not going to have a good looking hair. Right. <laughs> if you touch that uh, hair, I'll take every bit of and, it away. It might be. And that. have you ever seen him when he pulls out the satin 1970s Raiders jacket, he'll wear it with that hair? Oh, yeah. The one his dad wore when you went back to him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rick, he said he was a ball boy and his dad fired him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, maybe he had bad judgment. You know, maybe you have, we're seeing that again. You know, in those fairy tales, there's one little caveat yeah, that goes with but it. But here's the deal: you can't have good hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's gotta be it. We'll be back. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba.
It's nine minutes to the top of the hour of the Rick and Bubba Show, 866 We Be Big. Uh, your chance to get on the program. Lines are available. Matter of fact, all 10 lines are available. So uh, you, you, you dial it right now, baby. You'll get here. You'll get here. Uh, Dickie Nadmeyer is still to come on the program today. We will attempt to find him after a devast- uh, devastating loss, uh, something that uh, Nadmeyer does not have to deal with much, and that's a loss by the University of Alabama. So uh, we'll check in with him uh, probably coming up next hour. If we can find it. Uh, thank O'Reilly Auto Parts for all your car care needs. And as you're lining up your phone calls now at 866 we be big you can talk about any topic you want to. So with the 10 lines, uh, you get in easy. And because we troll, we keep that line moving in front of you. Pedal, Mississippi, this uh, Sunday night. Uh, I'll be there speaking to the Pine Belt Baptist Association. I think it's open to anybody who wants to attend. Uh, you can get those details at rickandbubba.com under upcoming events uh, from themanchurch.com. Catch uh, Scott the Rock Garoski coming up uh, this Sunday night. He'll be at the church at Liberty Park uh, kicking off the men's discipleship strategy there. Think O'Reilly Auto Parts for all your car care needs. Get guaranteed low prices and excellent customer service at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. We start uh, with Brad in Leeds, Alabama, listening to us on 1047 WZZK. All right, uh, Brad, welcome to Rick and Bubba. Go ahead. What's up, Brad? Good morning, fellas. Howdy. Um, I was just going to make your morning a little bit better. I think that uh, back to the Mark Davis haircut. Yes. If you um, Google, uh, if you Google that and you scroll down far enough, there's a compilation of pictures that have like whenever AB played on the Raiders and Derek Carr, and they all have that haircut photoshopped onto them, and it's about the best thing ever. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the Mark Davis haircut, it's... Uh, Rick, you, you just think, though, along the way, somebody, somebody, a cosmetologist, a barber, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a friend would say, hey, Mark, let's, what do you think about a makeover? Let me have a, let me have a shot at that. Right. You know, and yeah. uh, you, you just, I mean, you just think somebody would give it a try. Or just refuse to cut it. I, I've got a, the woman that cuts my hair, I brought up the mullet was back, and she said, before you go any further... <laughs> I will not let you have a mullet. Now, you have to get a mullet somewhere else. Can it ain't going to happen here. Can you have cosmetology malpractice? I, I don't know. <laughs> Terry in Alabama. Terry, 30 seconds. Go ahead. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, um, hey, hey Terry. I, I just wanted to ask, have you heard about the TikTok challenges of, um, with the devious flicks and the slap a teacher? I've heard um, of the slap a teacher one, yeah. I heard of it. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not. Oh, made you slap the back of the head. No, I, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't well, heard this. I, I one we girl punched story. a teacher, knocked her out of her chair. Yeah, you know, that's so not good. Yeah. You're supposed well, to video yourself hitting a teacher, basically. Well, I, are you I, kidding I, me? No, mm-hmm. I'm not kidding. And I didn't bring it up because it's so stupid. That's can can you imagine the terror if anybody, when we were in school, said, hey, I dare you to go uh, uh, no. uh, slap and uh, What are no. you talking about? No, no. Have you lost mm-hmm. your mind? Mm-hmm. TikTok. Uh, let's go to Michael in Alabama. Michael, go ahead. 30 seconds. How are you? Michael? Hey, guys. Hey, buddy. Hey, have y'all heard anything about Afghanistan? Is everybody out? Are we done with that? Or what's going on over there? No, uh, actually, we're going to take our tax dollars and send aid to the Afghani people. I thought the whole reason we were getting out of there so we'd quit spending money on them. Right. And now we're just going to uh, give them aid, which you know won't go to the people. Yeah, uh, now we still have American people trapped there. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. And, and it's kind of hard to get a number on it. I've heard that number get, mm-hmm. but they throw it around like a hot potato, don't they? They do. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's go to Adam in Birmingham. Adam, 30 seconds. Go ahead. Hey, good morning. Uh, 2031, 10 years from now, the, radio, the headlines will be former radio host Rick Burgess uh, will be canceled for pointing out in October of 2021 that the majority of the NFL base football players are African American. The fact that he took time to count the number of white people on the team. We don't allow that anymore. That's completely racist that he has been canceled. It could have. Let me tell you, if you're going to count, count the white people on the team, it won't take long. Uh, yeah. and, and you know why? Uh, because uh, the, the coaches play the best players. That's right. Uh, I, I would never go, well, I tell you what, we got to mix this up to be a little more diverse. I would never say that. I'd say I think the best players are to play. Uh, and let's continue. Uh, let's go to Eric out of Auburn. Eric, welcome to Rick and Bubba. Go ahead. Hey, thanks for having me. Good morning, guys. Uh, I know pleasure. you only got 30 seconds. Um, real quick, who who was the one that blew the whistle on Gruden? And also, I'd like to bring up the Rooney rule, where you have to 
um, if he's upset about forcing him to uh, draft gay players, they have to they force the owners to uh, interview black men for head coaching jobs. Well, what he was discussing was the Michael Sam thing. You know, the player that's on that's on Gruden's team currently, or the former coach Gruden. Uh, that was uh, that was not a forced thing. That just is a player that was already on there that that just happened uh, to uh, to be gay, which mm-hmm. uh, Gruden actually supported, which was odd. Uh, but uh, the thing about uh, I, this is that thing again where we're taking people's um, sexual or- orientation and comparing it to people's ethnicity. And I'm sorry, I don't go along with that. That is not the same thing. And and if I was someone of, of color uh, that had gone through what uh, you know the the African American people had gone through in this country with the Civil Rights Movement, it would offend me a little bit for the two to be compared. Uh, let's go to Josh in Mississippi. Josh, thirty seconds. Go ahead. Good morning, guys. Hey, hey buddy. Watching uh, watching as a Mississippi State fan, watching football the last couple of weeks. Uh, the way that Mississippi State beat Texas A&M and then Texas A&M beat Alabama and now State plays Alabama. Are we looking at a little bit of letdown from Alabama and we got a chance to maybe pull one out, or do you think they come in ticked off and just – Whoa, whoa, whoa! I think whoa, I would. Whoa, uh, whoa. I think I would go for the ticked off. Man, what, you, you need uh, to talk to him. What, what in the world, you sir? Need to talk to him, right? Josh. You're uh, Alabama. A letdown. <laughs> Alabama's going to come in as mad as a as a hive of hornets, and they're going to go absolutely nuts. As a matter of fact, at one point, if Mississippi State doesn't rise up, they'll be they'll be eating people's cowbells. <laughs> I, I mean, it, the, the, Alabama's not going to have a letdown. They're going to have a hey, we're still in control of our destiny, and Mississippi State better come ready to play. Yeah. And I think they they will. But uh, this thing where you compare, where well, we beat a team and then that team beat that team. Mm-hmm. The games are too individual it's, for that. It's fun to do, but every yeah. Saturday has to stand on its own merit. Yeah. And uh, I, I know you're, boy, I know you're, I, I know you're practicing on that. That was a little harsh. Oh, was you know, okay. just somewhere in between. Okay, you know what I mean. I well, mean that was. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate you talking to him. Yeah. Point but look, blank, I've but, been going to Mississippi State games for the last. I was going to say three years, but then it let's go to any last year. Yeah. But when you could go two out of the last three years, and I'll be at the game. Well, I won't be at the game. I'll be at the tailgate Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think Mississippi State fans should keep the attitude that they've had as long as I've known them. They have no expectations whatsoever. Let's just see what happens. You hardly have been here at the tailgate, the game even being talked about. Mississippi State fans know when they go in there, there's no idea what's going to happen. Okay, and they have no expectation. <laughs> Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
It is six minutes past the hour. The Rick and Bubba Show. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Van Adler all here today. Team Rick and Bubba back at full strength. Our thanks to Sergeant Pepper for filling in while Adler was away. and uh, But he and Helmsy have returned from their fall break weekends uh, with their wives and families. Uh, and uh, welcome back for another hour. There's Bill Bubba Bus. Rick, glad to be here. And thank all of you for joining us here on the little party we call Rick and Bubba. So uh, we're going to talk about, uh, we got a lot of video and audio about this, uh, this plane crash uh, that happened in a San Diego suburb. We'll start out. Here is um, the spokesperson uh, for the fire department telling us uh, what took place. So here we go. At 12.15, we received a call of an aircraft crash. Uh, our first units were on scene at 1221, and as you can see behind me, uh, we had multiple structures that were fully involved with fire. We had an aircraft that has confirmed, a portion of the aircraft confirmed crash in the back of one of the homes. We also had multiple vehicles on fire, including a large box truck that is right across the street. Mm, that's, uh, we, we had this plane come down in this neighborhood. Yeah, it hit a UPS truck and uh-huh. burned two houses totally down. So um, this, that we've got some some updates. Uh, we've got some neighbors that, that uh, helped a couple out of their home after the plane crashed into into the neighborhood. So, uh, the, the I mean, people had to go and rescue people and had to oh, help no. people and and um, and so uh, here, here this is look look they're trying to help them. Look at that man! Can you imagine that coming down inside your neighborhood? And they're helping people out of this house here. Mm. It's a UPS truck. Look at that, brother. I mean, you just man. And they're getting people out of their house now, God. and they're helping them. I mean, so this the plane just crashed right into the neighborhood. Yep. And uh, you know, look, I've at, look at that about, fire, but look at all the fire. I've always right. thought about what somebody like that goes through. I mean, think of you just sitting in your house watching TV or something, and all of yeah. a sudden, boom. Right. I mean, it's just like a missile coming in the neighborhood. So we have the security cam footage. Uh, you know, that now with all these security cameras, Man. you you end up seeing things yeah. just as they happened. And so this this camera actually catches uh, the crash footage yeah. uh, mm-hmm. in, in uh, as as it takes place. Look, boom! Did you wow. see it back there? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And you, yeah, it's coming in. Wow, really hot. Oh, man. And you can see the full wing, so it's it's kind of tilted up sideways. It, it yeah. is, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it is. It and if is. you hear the, uh, Rick, and this may be the audio from the. Uh, okay, I'll turn it up. Yeah, so, you, you may have the audio there from air traffic control because they're, they're telling him to go up, and he's yeah. saying, I am up. And they said, no, you're going down. So I, I don't know what the uh, confusion was there. They were trying to get him up. So Some l- people think that the pilot had a stroke. Okay. Oh, really? Turn two two golf. Turn right, hitting zero nine or zero. Climb immediately. Maintain four thousand. Thousand climbing immediately. Two to golf. Is this a simulator? Okay. It looks like you're okay. descending, sir. I need to make sure you are climbing, not descending. Go to climbing. Turn two two golf. Stay altitude. He said uh, twenty five hundred to the golf. Turn two two golf. Low altitude alert. Climb immediately. Climb the airplane. Maintain five thousand. Expedite climb. Climb the airplane, please. The two two golf, just level out the plane or the heading and climb the airplane up to five thousand when you can, sir. Ten o'clock and a half mile, one thousand five hundred. You appear to be descending again, sir. Are you say altitude? Princess and seven zero two two golf, so come approach. Got two hundred currently two nine or seven eight. This point, the, uh, at this point, the air traffic control starts to break up, and what y'all are seeing here is a simulation showing the actual flight path with the actual audio. Wow. Mm, wow. So they're simulating uh, what was happening. The aircraft just crashed uh, about a half mile in front of us into the houses. Mm. Helicopter 129-er, turn east now. Turn east. Good night. Just coming right down on that subdivision. Yeah, look, he just said the simulation here with the actual air traffic controller conversation. Right. And you heard him say the audio is a little ahead of the simulator. It's mm-hmm. down in a neighborhood. 
So here it comes. See, there's the oh, side wow. There's that side tilt. Mm-hmm. So you're saying they're thinking the pilot may have had a stroke of some kind? Because I never really heard the pilot talking yeah. back. Yeah, you could tell something was going yeah, on. Yeah, you heard he was in those initial conversations. Was he? Yeah. What, what was? What but was, he's uh, just disoriented. He doesn't seem like he kind of oh, understanding thinking. what's going on. It, I don't know. He, uh, Rick, they they call him. They say golf. Is it two? I don't have the transcript here. I saw yeah. it earlier today, but he answers them. You can hear. Um, you, it's the one with the noise in the background. Okay. When he Adler, let's hear it one more time. Can we hear the whole thing again? So this is the simulator, but actual mm-hmm. audio right. from the, the air traffic controller. And we'll we'll see if we can. It's amazing how they can go right. back in 4, and do this. 4, let me with you. Two to That's okay, it looks like you're descending, sir. I need to make sure you are climbing, not descending. Go to climbing. There are 2-2 two, golf, stay altitude. Uh, 2,500 to the golf. There are 2-2 two, two golf, low altitude alert. Climb immediately. Climb the airplane, maintain 5,000. Expedite climb. Climb the airplane, please. There are 2-2 two, two golf, just level out the plane or the heading and climb the airplane up to 5,000 when you can, sir. We're tango, we're tango, we're tango, we're tango, we're tango. 10 o'clock and a half mile, 1,500. You appear to be descending again, sir. Are you, say, altitude? Princess and 7022 Golf, so come approach. Got two hundred currently two nine or seven eight. Hmm. You never hear him again. Uh, you hear from him again, yeah. Yeah, so we did. The, the, the last transmission he doubled with the air traffic control. You heard when it yeah, was I did. buzzing. I did hear that. Mm-hmm. But the, the, you heard him the first couple. I mean, he's he didn't sound like he was having a stroke at that point, but he's already descending and getting off course. And so. thinking he's not. So right. he may have yeah. been he may have been getting disoriented. Yeah. Rick, as a matter of fact, he he's a, a doctor, and I can't this first name I can't say Das D A S. Uh, he uh, is the chief medical officer at Yuma Regional Medical Center in Arizona, and apparently uh, came to San Diego from time to time. Uh, I don't know if he worked there too or what the deal was, um, but. It, it just a just a tragedy yesterday, and I, I I I we're still assuming that he had some kind of medical problem. It was not intentional. So at uh, this point, the the death that we have, two people we know were killed, including that UPS driver. Because just think, I mean, look if your if your UPS truck gets hit by a plane falling out of the sky, yeah, uh, that's that's not survivable. Um, and they think two other people were injured. Um, obviously, I'm assuming the pilot is is no longer with us. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so. yeah, and, yeah, he didn't like it. Yeah, so. Is he the only one that was in the plane? I, I believe uh, they, so. They yeah. think so. Yeah. So uh, anyway, that's a sad story. I mean, because uh, when when something like this falls out of the sky into your neighborhood, it's just and there's a picture of him, the doctor you were talking about. So um, so sad story. Uh, and this town, I, I don't know if it's in the uh, in, in the path headed to San Diego or what. They also had a crash in a commercial area back in 2015 that killed a pilot, and another crash 10 years ago in a residential area also killed a pilot. So this will be their third pilot, third uh, crash in 10 years. Wow. That's a, that's, uh, that, that's, that'll bring out the for sale sign. Yeah, yeah, that's a little high, isn't it? Uh, that, that, no, right now, I'm just being straight up. There's only so many times I'm going to be here and planes drop out of the sky. Right. I mean, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you imagine trying to sell the house? So why are y'all moving? Well, uh, 15 minutes past the hour, 866-WE-BE-BIG is the number. More Rick and Bubba coming up right after this. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. So the prices of just about everything are rising.
the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. 20 minutes Bubba, now past the hour Bubba, of the Rick and Bubba show. Um, yesterday, Bubba, we did not hear from him, nor did we attempt to find Bubba, him Bubba, because we knew better. Um, remember, if you're a University of Alabama football fan, you, you don't experience defeat very much at all. Uh, a shocking defeat over the weekend. Many of you were on social media uh, over the weekend and yesterday and emailing. Um, have y'all heard from super fan um, Dickie Nadmire? We have not, and Speedy was not willing to try to get him on the phone. Well, he needed uh, 24 hours. Well, you got to, yeah, there's a certain grieving period that must take yeah, place. Maybe 48. Uh, yeah. But I believe we, we have him on the line. We so. <laughs> Dicky, are you there? Road Tide. Oh, it's cold. Sounds a little cold. Dicky, I I know it's uh, it's a tough week for you. May I ask a question to the Auburn and Mississippi (laughs) State fans that are in the studio? (laughs) Okay. Is this what it feels like to be (laughs) y'all? All All right. (laughs) Okay. So how long long has it been since you had to deal with a loss, Dicky? It's so far back in the memories, I believe – it's possible the last time that Alabama lost a game of significance, uh, Speedy still had hair. All right. <laughs> I can tell you this, it was pre-COVID. Yeah, I, I was going <laughs> to say, I think Trump was still president and it was pre-COVID. Yeah, yeah 2019. That, that's yeah, been a while. Biden's president and Bama's lost. The country's done. Well, Dickie, <laughs> I, 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 know, I know you probably have some ideas. What went wrong uh-huh. in College Station? Yeah. Well, one thing, Gary Danielson. What? Gary Daniels, <laughs> Dickie, the Gary announcer Daniels on CBS. He, could, he couldn't even get the little the little smirk off his face. He was so glad that Bama was losing. <laughs> I, I thought I thought Gary Danielson was gonna was going to. Uh, uh, I thought he was gonna just have a conniption of joy. He just loves seeing Bama. He hates Bama. He's always against Bama. And let's talk, let's talk about the calls that Bama didn't get. Hmm. Oh, well, I, I started to say I, I I didn't know that Gary had had taken the post that Vern used to have, but I guess he's I guess he's, uh, he's, he's responsible now. But he's always hated the tide. He's against the tide. He he just wants the tide to lose. <laughs> but but on so the field, Dicky <laughs> on the field, what went wrong? Well, we got to fire the defensive coordinator. Oh, okay, Dicky. <laughs> now the it's defensive coordinator needs to go. Now, Out. this is the That's, same defensive yeah. coordinator that got you an undefeated national championship yeah. last year, right? Well, that all goes back to Saban. No, oh, uh, okay. All right. Uh, Saban has, has getting softer in his, in his older age, and he's allowing defensive coordinators to – frankly, our defenses, if I can just speak frankly, our defenses have not been up to par. We've become too obsessed with the high-flying offense, which is not really Bama football, <laughs> and, and, and we've gotten away from what made us great, if I can just speak frankly. <laughs> frankly. <laughs> so why do you think that Coach Saban is allowing that? Because he's the, the final word, right? Well, as men get older, their testosterone oh, there it is. begins to drop. And I believe that Coach Saban could be suffering from low T. Okay. Dicky <laughs> Mad new Eugenics. Dicky Mad Mile. And by the way, we got into an incident in College Station. You did. Mm. Can't imagine that. Well, as Phyllis thought that Jimbo Fisher was Greg Burgess. <laughs> <laughs> good. Hey, Greg. And she screamed some inappropriate things at Coach Fisher that brought security. <laughs> I said, I said, the Phillips, that's Coach Fisher. That ain't the Greg Burgess. <laughs> well, how do you feel about Jimbo Fisher being <laughs> the first funny. assistant to beat Nick Saban? Well, Texas A&M fans, uh, they can thank Nicholas Saban. <laughs> if it were not for the brilliance of Nicholas Saban, uh, Jimbo Fisher's of the world would not exist. Mm. And, and so College Station basically is celebrating a victory of, of, of basically an Alabama scrimmage. <laughs> <laughs> what well, do you, uh, Dickie? Do you remember at one time UAB had hired Jimbo Fisher and the board of trustees cut that off at the, at the knees and he had to go somewhere else? Well, let me ask you something. If you had a chance to keep one of your cousins from competing against you in morning radio, would you allow it? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so let's look ahead. We'll put this in the rearview mirror. We put every what? loss in the rearview mirror, but we learned from them. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, we got another question. Well, no, Speedy. I'm just, you know, Dickie, they had the storm in the field. I mean, you're there. Mm. It's, 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 it's mania. Classless. I mean, how, how did y'all get out of there? Classless. <laughs> you, you, you can see when fans don't know what winning's like. <laughs> And and every time somebody defeats Bama on the rarest of occasions, mm-hmm. it's like Haley's Comet. It don't come around much. <laughs> right, every couple of years. That's a good one. Well, tied. <laughs> well, you see the classless. They don't have yeah. to handle it. Bama, we don't pull down go posts. We just roll through the next day. Mm-hmm. And, and what happens, classless, classless, don't know how to act, mm-hmm. don't know how to behave. At one point, I think they had Gary Downson on their shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> He's right in the middle of it. Yeah. So and the official and the official to let some things go. Oh, they really oh, right. the officiating. We have to play against Gary Danielson. We have to play against the, the, the referees. Uh-huh. We have to play against uh, all sorts of things because we're the tide and everybody desires to be us. <laughs> but I thought I thought the fans were costless. Okay. So so let's look forward. <laughs> uh, Mississippi State Starkville this weekend. How do you see that one playing out? Bama 61, because we will miss an extra point. The Brockard kids do. <laughs> Bama 61, uh, State 4. Four. 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 <laughs> Two safeties. We, so, we will kneel twice in the end zone to keep having to punt running the clock out. Okay. <laughs> so, Dickie, does it bother you at all that Mississippi State beat Texas A&M, the team you nah, just lost to? Like, this is typical. This is the way Auburn fans see the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm just asking so-and-so. your opinion on it. It's, uh, so, uh, well, my team beat so-and-so, and then that team beat y'all. That must mean we just beat Bama indirectly. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? You can't beat Bama for scarcely. Do what? You beat Bama, Bama what? For scarcely. Do another team. For scarcely. Do another team. <laughs> That's right. Do it on the field. Okay. <laughs> now, Dickie. Um, you think we fear what Mississippi State did to College Station? Yeah. Um, Dickie, uh, Mississippi State's known for its tailgating and great food at the junction. And I understand Rick is going to be there tailgating. Are you going to go by and see him? I wouldn't go near Rick Burgess if my life depended on it. <laughs> yeah, you would. Don't like him. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> Ain't got much for him. Never what, have. What? Why? Why don't you like him, Dickie? What is it? Well, well he's got a, a bit of a self-righteous attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, has he forgotten he used to be a drunk just like us? <laughs> That's so funny. Golly, Lord. So good. He's got a little bit of, got a little bit of his raisin. Yeah. 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 Rich has got a little big for him, and that's a, and that's a feat. <laughs> so, so that's a no. That's a no, then. We're going to beat Mississippi State, and that Mississippi State, they ain't worried about it. They don't expect nothing. My goodness, they hired a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how do you like the pirate? Don't care for him. Don't take it serious. Football's serious. <laughs> I know that playing around, man. No, we wouldn't tolerate that at Bama. We had a press conference. Let's talk about, hey, let's talk about a, a raccoon I saw. <laughs> <laughs> I followed the raccoon to see where it went. Who in the? Uh, <laughs> that's your football coach. Okay. Let me tell you my favorite pirate. Yeah. Are you kidding me? How about the cowbells? Will you enjoy that? Mm. Oh my gosh! I tell you one thing. I've seen the women down there. No wonder they got cowbells. Uh, oh, Dickie, oh, man. Dickie. oh my goodness! Oh, that's a good Dickie, one. you okay with uh, your coach? Uh, it seems as if he's appearing in all these Aflac commercials. The yeah. latest with Dion. Do you think that has anything to do with it? Yeah, I go back to my low T statement. Low T. <laughs> you know, at Bama, we usually know when to pull the trigger. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's face it. We had to. We had, uh, um, we, we let the bear probably hang around a little longer than we should have. Mm, mm. And and sometimes it's time to, to start thinking about what you're going to do next. Mm-hmm. There you go. All well, right, Dickie, thank you for this call. I know there's been nothing, uh, you know, controversial in it, and uh, we appreciate your <laughs> feedback. Yeah. What do you think the odds are me getting canceled? Just screwed out. <laughs> oh, boy. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
35 minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba Show, 866-WE-BE-BIG is our number. We go phone trolling now, uh, chatting with you, and uh, we got eight or so lines available. Some that have been on hold a while, we'll get to those phone calls here. Uh, it'll be rapid fire, though, so uh, there's plenty of room for you if you want to get in right now at 866-WE-BE-BIG. Uh, the, at the end of the 30 seconds, the buzzer, yee, uh, it sounds, and then the next person gets their shot. So uh, I do want to tell you about helixsleep.com slash Bubba. I had some people send an email this week asking about this, and I said, oh, yes. Uh, the real Greg Burgess and his uh, wife, Lisa, they uh, they ordered a helixsleep.com uh, uh, mattress, uh, went right to their door. Uh, they ask you a few questions. Uh, how do you like the firmness of the mattress? Uh, you want that soft medium? You like it? Do you like a real firm mattress? Uh, do you do you like uh, do you sleep on your side, your back, your stomach? They want to know all these things so they can design a mattress that is uh, customized for the way that you sleep. Uh, and they'll send this right to you. And we're going to save you two hundred dollars uh, if you'll use the URL helixsleep.com slash bubba. We'll also get you a one hundred day free trial for you to try it at uh, no obligation to keep it, but you're going to. Because uh, you're going to love it. Helixsleep.com slash Bubba. Also a link at rickandbubba.com there under the sponsors button. All right, to the phones we go. If you want to get in right now, you can. Dial us up at 866-WE-BE-BIG. Doug in Alabama gets us started. Trolling, trolling, trolling. Keep them phones to trolling. Here we come, phone trolling, phone, phone troll. troll. Doug, how are you, buddy? Go ahead. I'm great. Uh, I just want to tell you all I think i got a way to get the border closed down there in Texas. Okay. We need somebody go down and give every man, woman, and child crossing the Rio Grande a Trump 24 hat. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Let them come to the border wearing a hat like that, and the Democrats will shut it down for us. Well, that, uh, that probably would be something that, uh, that, that might cause uh, us to look at the border. We'll, we'll show you some video coming up here in a little bit later on, the, the, we, the shocking footage of miles of unused steel. Just yeah, $100 million worth sitting just, down there rusting. Just lying out there in the desert. Yep. Uh, because uh, this, this concept that somehow it's evil and sinful to have a border and allow people to immigrate to your country legally – and, and vet people out if they're seeking asylum, make sure that's the truth. And also, since we keep being told that it's the end of time uh, with the pandemic and all who don't wear masks or, or, or who not are, are not vaccinated are evil uh, in the scourge of the earth, even if they have natural antibodies, which is bizarre. But anyway, but yet, if you just roll in the border, uh, none of that's in play. You see how no. it's hard for everybody to believe that that's really well, true? Well, yeah, or look around the Capitol building. They have fencing up again. Look around the White House. They have levels of fencing around that because they're keeping out people who are not authorized to be there. So I, I don't see how in the world you can sit inside a Capitol building that has security all around it, fencing all around it, and say that the border ought to be open. It, it's just it's mind-boggling to me. I, I can't even – I can't even – I mean, there's no neutral ground on this. I, I don't even understand how you come up with that. If I were, it's lunacy. If I lunacy. Was, if I was the new president of the United States of America, I would say, okay, thank y'all for coming here today, and just see if you have any issue with what I'm about to say. You know what? We are very excited uh, about uh, you know the opportunities that our country has afforded uh, people, and we certainly love the diversity of our country and uh, how we've had people who have immigrated here from all over the world uh, to make this country. Uh, what it is, and to accomplish the things that have been allowed, uh, because we uh, we uh, we provide citizens of our country uh, uh, maximum liberty, so that through that maximum liberty they could maximize their maximum God-given potential. And we encourage uh, people to, uh, if you desire to come to our country and and make it better, as as, as our history has reflected, we'd love for that to take place. We have a, a legal immigration policy. And as president of the United States of America, I'm going to take a long look at our legal immigration policy. And maybe there's too much government regulations and we could uh, do a better job. Uh, but we will be uh, have a closed border because you can't have a sovereign country if you don't vet the people who desire to come to your country. So we, we certainly uh, want to provide the American dream for as many people uh, as we possibly can. And we'll do that through our legal process so that we make sure that um, – uh, that we're following all the, the rules to keep the people who are already here, including those who have immigrated here over generations, that we keep them safe uh, from anybody who uh, might want to do us harm. Also, we you know, want to be sure that people who come through our, our border are, have the same uh, health requirements that we require of our own citizens. 
to be sure that no one uh, unnecessarily endangers anyone else. Uh, and that will be our process going forward. Uh, and that, and we will implement that, and, and we'll take a long look at our legal immigration vetting process, and we'll try to see if we can't smooth that out a little bit. Uh, but we will have a border around this country because we're a sovereign nation, uh, and it's not, it's not wicked or evil uh, for us to make sure that those that desire to come here uh, mean us no harm and those that are seeking refuge and asylum truly meet that standard. So thank you so much. I appreciate you all being here today, and that's my view of how we'll handle our immigration process and our border. Yeah, I, I, I would like that, Mr. President. Uh, you know, does, that, you really, does that sound unreasonable? When you really think about it, mm -hmm. there is nothing in our society on heaven or on earth that has unlimited access to it. Nothing. We have doors. You know what a door is for? To stop from people from coming in and out. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's an access limiting device. We have doors on our house. We have doors on our car. With all of them have locks on them, by the way. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind. Um, hotels, you can't go into a hotel unless you're a guest there or checking in. You don't have just access to go in. Can't go into a movie <clears throat> theater unless you buy a ticket. Uh, can't, can't get on an airplane. Can't mm -hmm. go on an airplane. we got all kind of fences around airports. Uh, everything we deal with is limited access. Schools, uh, our government buildings, any bu I mean, uh, private buildings now. You have to have a a pass or a card to get into it. It's, it's controlled access. Heaven is a controlled access. I mean, everything we deal with ha has authorized users. It is so foreign to say, eh, border come who, what may that, that is the oddity. That's what doesn't belong in this group. Not the fact that we want to put a fence or a wall up to limit access. By the way, if I could have an adult conversation with the adults mm -hmm. in charge of this, also, if you let people come rolling through here, others will come. Yeah. And we got them, buddy. Wait to wait till the Christmas gift this year. Lee, welcome to Rick and Bubba out of Huntsville. Go ahead. Uh, Leah? Lee? Oh, yeah. Okay, hey, go ahead. Yeah, Leah. Mm -hmm. well, so... Um, I sell chemicals uh, for my job. I'm a remote employee, and I have a purchaser that came off at a plant in Georgia. Her name is Wanda, and she talks like a gentleman, uh, like a chain smoker. So if mm. you want to know where Wanda is, she's a purchaser for a plant in Georgia now. You know, one of the things counselors will tell you, if people have been through trauma, mm. be careful bringing things up they're not expecting. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Bubba and I, if you, there's, few, there's some people – Throughout our radio history, that if you just bring them up without us knowing it, we we it, it traumatizes us just a little bit. And Willie and Wanda meet that, that well, criteria. Well, Rick, there's all kind of old sayings that have been passed down generation to generation. I think there's a reason why because they they have proven successful yeah. time and time again. Yeah. And one of them is let sleeping dogs lie. Yes, and, and no, no doubt. Uh, so I, I'm kind of from that school. Uh, what do you think too is there? Wiley, Wiley, out of the free state of Florida. Hey, Wiley, how you doing? Hey, good morning. How y'all doing? We're good. great. We're great. Yeah, I uh, heard y'all talking about the uh, plane crash earlier in San Diego. I've been waiting until I had good cell coverage to call you because I'm driving south on uh, 231. But uh, one thing that commonly happens in aviation, we, we call it spatial disorientation. Yes. Yeah. And it happens a lot at night or when the weather is poor. And I noticed at one point that controller said the altimeter setting was 2.9 or 7.8, which is a lower, that's on the lower end. Mm -hmm. That's a good indication of some uh, bad weather, whether it was near the ground or up higher. And when someone's spatial disoriented, they don't think they're going up when they're going down. It, it, think, think vertigo in the air. Yeah, know? right. I understand. Well, I mean, uh, I, I, I don't know. I assume he was instrument rated flying. It was a dual right. engine plane. Um, you know, you, Cessna. Yeah, you have to look at the, uh, you know, you have to fly by your instruments if you if you can't visually identify. So, it, it, I mean, he, did he have a malfunction with his equipment? Uh, right. Air traffic controller told him he was going the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So right. Well, I, well, I've had uh, I'm actually a uh, instrument uh, rated instructor pilot, and I've seen it where sometimes in small planes, just a little malfunction in the instruments or. Even when the instruments are working correctly, if someone starts to get a little bit of spatial disorientation that way because, you know, confusing ground lights or stars or whatever, that they may not believe their instruments and will try to go by what their body's telling them instead of what the instruments are telling them. Right, I understand. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard of that. Isn't that what happened to John Kennedy Jr.? That, that yeah. rumor. He that. was on a 
he was on a dark night over water with nothing to really have a reference, and he did not believe his instruments. Yeah. Uh, Wally, let me ask you this, too, uh, and I know this seems oversimplistic with all the uh, instrumentation they have, but would it would it just be terrible to have a plumb bob hanging from the rearview mirror a little bit, you know, a string with a weight on it, and that's going to tell you which way down is? Well, that depends. If you're in a turn or something, it's not going to because of G-forces. Yeah. So it, it's going to go with that. So it would, right. still, right. it would still indicate down because of that, even though you're not. You, mm-hmm. could, be in a, you could be in a steep turn. And it's going to look like your level because it'll be hanging straight. Okay. Wow, that's a lot to think about. I appreciate that. Thanks a lot, brother. Uh, let's go to Derek in Illinois. Derek, welcome to Rick and Bubba. Go ahead. Thirty seconds. Hey, Green Acres guys. Thanks for so, the call, buddy. I'm on my way to. <laughs> I'm on my way to work this morning, and I'm hearing you guys talk about the Oakland Raiders owner's haircut. Oh yeah. I'm trying to get a visual in my head, <laughs> and so as soon as I get to work, I get on the computer and look it up. You guys do not do justice to how bad that haircut is. That yeah, is the yeah. that is that is like Hollywood making it as bad as possible and then one step worse. Don't you think it's the worst maybe we've ever seen? I I I can't I couldn't if you were to ask me to come up with the worst haircut I've ever seen, I couldn't get that. <laughs> yeah, I mean we we've seen people with a little little Dutch boy haircut, you know, where they cut the barn doors out the front. Uh We've seen the bowl cut. Uh, this is really, uh, I mean, it looks like he got in a fight with a weed eater and lost. It really does. You know, I mean, I just can't believe somebody doesn't go, hey, hey, Mark, I'm your friend. Let's give me a shot on that hair. Let me try to do something with yeah, it. But, uh, let, well, let me introduce you to the part. Yeah, give me a shot at it. Yeah, just give me a shot. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
Eight minutes to the top of the hour. The Rick and Bubba Show. We're back. 866-WE-BE-BIG. Thanks for being with us today on the program. Will of Meat is in play. Could happen at any time on the program. All right, so Kamala Harris, we, we played some of that weird video uh, on yesterday's program. We can revisit this. Remember, Bubba and I have been telling you over and over again that we are now living in a fake world. Uh, it, there's, there's really nothing that is actually genuine. Uh, we're, we're living in a world of propaganda. Uh, play, we, we've got, of course, uh, all sorts of hyperbole. Uh, we have we patronize. Uh, there's not a lot of sincerity in our world today. Just about everything that we see and we hear, if you really think it through, it's all fake. My goodness, we've gone as far as we actually have the president a fake set for him because it's a place where he can read teleprompters better. Uh, I mm-hmm. mean, guys, and and now and Rick, they have the fake set at the White House. I know that's what's even that, strange. And basically, their answer is this is a better place for him to be able to read. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, so now as he keeps asking us uncontrollably for ice cream. <laughs> uh, by the way, the <laughs> Babylon Bee is off and running on this Brandon thing. Mm-hmm. I didn't get the joke. I had to actually research what what they're talking about, and now it's owning me <laughs> because they're doing a callback on it all the time, and it comes from the person that was at the Talladega race uh, that was doing some sort of commentating, mm-hmm. and the crowd was singing Oh yeah, blank uh, Biden. Yeah. And she says, oh, they're, they're, they're giving a shout-out to Brandon. Uh, who, whatever. So now the new thing is when people are chanting that about the president, that, that now Babylon B's claiming, oh, uh oh, another shout out for Brandon. <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, I didn't get that joke, but now it's on me. Yeah. Now they said Southwest Airlines has a banner on the back of their plane that says, uh, uh, shout out to Brandon. Oh, <laughs> but, but anyway, so um, uh, now we've discovered that the reason why it felt so weird to watch Kamala Harris. You know, as y'all said earlier, gravely concerned about the border situation. Yeah, yeah that she's in charge of, by the way. Yeah, she's sitting around with a bunch of school kids. Hadn't we, been within right? hundred miles of mm-hmm. school by kids the way. that we thought. Yeah, uh, doing this weird commentary on craters on the moon. Uh, well, we've discovered uh, that again. This is fake as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are not school children. I, I mean, they may be in school somewhere. But I, they, I don't have mm-hmm. a problem with what she said, Rick. I mean, I'm fired up about space too. But why do this and, and why fake it? Right, you know, I, I don't get this. Well, you could you could go to a school and talk to kids about science, of course, the the science and the space world they're going to live up uh, in in the future because of the advancements we're having. Uh, I, but but these are not students; they're actors who tried out for this job. Now I'll tell you why, because everything's a fake world. You, if you'll look at the the diversity, you'll see why they used actors. We're, we have a child that represents every ethnicity that you could possibly come up with. And I'm surprised that one of them did not announce too that they were transgender. Right? Uh, yeah. but, but, you, but, you may be. One but I. But I mean, you know. The, so what they did is they held auditions, and you had to audition to pretend mm-hmm. to be a school child listening to the vice president talk about the moon. Right. And I still, you probably know, but what is she even talking about that we're going to see it better than we ever saw? What is she talking? Well, about? Well, I, I think the way I took it, and I may be totally wrong here. Now, of course, she had she had realtor eyes while she was doing it. She but, did. I, I thought but, she, I thought she was saying that this is going to be a good time for you. You're going to see some miraculous things in your lifetime. We're going back to the moon. We're going to go to Mars. You're going to. There's going to be a lot of people travel to the moon probably in your lifetime. You're going to get a chance to see those craters on the moon close up. That's the way I took it. I may be totally wrong. Well, it was hard to follow because I know, of the because animated it, acting. But, but why why put it out? I don't understand what they were trying to yeah, comment. What was the purpose here? Here's for, some for, of it. To go. And then there's other things that we just haven't figured out or discovered yet. To think about so much that's out there that we still have to learn. Like, I love that. I love that. And so I'm very excited about the Space Council. We're going to learn so much um, as we increasingly, I think, are curious and interested in the potential for the discoveries and the work we can do in space. So that's one of the things I'm most excited about. But the other, you guys are going to see, you're going to literally see the craters on the moon with your own eyes. Oh my goodness. With your own eyes, I'm telling you, it is going to be unbelievable. 
Okay. What's the space camp? If I had done, if I had done that speech, you would go, well, yeah, Bubba loves space. He's fired. I don't understand why they had an audition and a production here. What What can, are they can selling? Can we go can to a school? Spe- what, what, what is the space council? She mentioned that. Right. It was uh, the Get Curious with Vice President Harris Um mm. I guess <laughs> initiative. Don't you say it. Um, Don't you dare and, say and there's, it. I saw your facial expression. Yeah. Don't you dare say it. Um, All right, there, go ahead. I think there's one thing we need to point Two out. Two words, too, John Gruden. If you don't mind. Okay. Um, Trent, or Trevor, I should say, which is one of the. What's it um, called again? Uh, it is, uh, let's see, the Get Curious with Vice President <laughs> Harris video uh, that was filmed in microphone. August <laughs> and then tweeted out by Vice President uh, Kamala uh, Harris on October the 7th, celebrating. World Space Week. Okay. Uh, what is the Space Council? She says, well, I'm excited about the Space Council. What is that? Bubba, you, that's your area. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, don't know what I, I can look into that, but I, if I could just make one point. Do you hear how she's talking? Ooh, yeah. Now, these kids are like 13 years old, <laughs> yeah. okay? Right. And she's she, talking she's to them like she's in a, grade in a, voice yeah, in a, a <laughs> kindergarten class, a first grade class, well, reading know, them a book. I don't know if you paid attention. It's like she's reading them Larry the Leaf or something. Our central government seems – they talk to me this way. Right. I, I'm, 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 I'm 57 years old. Stop speaking to me like I'm a child. Yeah. You talk to me, Fauci, you speak to me about the pandemic like I'm some child. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is ridiculous. This they, they talk to everybody like you're a child. Yeah, uh, but it's a fake world. Well, That's I, all we talked about. I, Actors I, had to audition. That you, we can't sit the vice president down, Bubba. To your point, with school kids at a school and talk about this. I don't have a problem talking about it. Right. But why are we pretending that these are a bunch of school children? That, that were at some random school when they're actors who auditioned to, yeah, to play what, a part mm, in the video. Yeah. What are you selling here? I, I don't I, get what the push is. Um, uh, so all right, so <laughs> it, it says here, Harris, who is the chair of the cabinet level National Space <laughs> Council since May, um, is is well, I guess what she's referring to about the space. Are these council. the kids off School of Rock? By <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's saying, did Jack Black bring them? I mean, it's what it looks like. You know why? Because it's a movie. This is a movie, too. Look, you got yeah. the bass player on the right right yeah. there. Uh-huh. Yeah. You got the, the kid on the keyboard. You There's got the guy the, does you the You got lights. the agent, the lights, and you got the backup singer right there. Yeah, right. There's the keyboard player. Yep. Get the whole bunch. You got the it, it's it. exactly. It's the school of rock. It, it yeah. really is. Top of the hour. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
six minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba show from the broadcast plaza and teleport. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, and Eddie Van Adler are all here this hour. What version is that? That ain't Jack Black. This is from the uh, Broadway play. Okay, I started saying that ain't Jack Black uh-uh. singing. Too high. So, Bubba, we um, we Isn't start. That funny that video is the school of rock. Uh, no. <laughs> for, for some reason, you, you have a terrible time on Apple Music finding the soundtrack track that from the actual movie. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why you only, you only find the Broadway stuff out there. Uh, also, I realized the other day too when I thought we had found the Walter Payton. Nobody does it better. Yeah, it was really they pulled some of that from the actual one, and it was after he died. Right. So they put photos and stuff in it. It wasn't the actual NFL Films documentary in its completion. I got ready to show it to Brody. Got all excited, and all so I'm like, "Wait a minute! Right here, they're supposed to be showing this. And they're showing just pictures of of Walter Payton." So I still, even though you can go to YouTube and find that. It, it's not the original thing. It's they used part of that NFL Films thing to attribute. Oh, it's to not them. the. It's okay. not the actual thing. Well, so, we, uh, w- which w- hurt by the way. We, we've got a story here today that we're, we're going to have to ask a question because mm. I, I'm confused on some of the rules here. How this yeah. will work? Yeah. But NBA player J.R. Smith, he's won two NBA championships, has played on the team with LeBron most of the time when he won those. Uh, he uh, he's had a, a a very successful pro career. Uh, he is known probably for, for a couple of other things that happened. One, when he pulled the ball out of the lane when they were uh, – was it tied or behind? You know, LeBron yeah. got mad at him because he took the ball out of the paint uh, in one of the championship games. And the other is when he beat up the rider that was messing with his car or truck yeah. uh, in yeah, L.A. Now, that, now let me tell you, that's not the person you try to carjack. No, no. And, and then he apologized for it. We're all going, hey, uh, I, I thought it was a good job. Uh, but Jr. has decided he uh, his NBA days are over. Uh, he has decided to go back to college. He is a freshman at North Carolina A and T, and he has joined the golf team. I did not know he was such an avid golfer, but apparently he is. And uh, you remember this is where he took the ball out of the paint, and uh, and LeBron was unhappy with him. I forgot um, about that. Yeah. But aside from from that low note, he's had a a. You know, he's Great won two, yeah, yeah, two NBA championships. I mean, how many people would love to say that? Yeah. Right. And so uh, he's now gone back, North Carolina A&T. He's on the golf team, and uh, he had his first golf match. I understand he, he started uh, pretty good, but then ran aground later in it, and I think we have a story on it here, Rick. Yeah, so okay. here you go. He said it's – No, it's not. It's, it's just, uh, it's just B-roll. It's just B-roll. It's B-roll. Okay. Yeah, yeah so uh, – I guess my question is – and. T- how many years does he have left? And and because I thought you only could do, yeah. like you had like five or six years to play, play for four, four years. Right. But I got to looking up. He never played college basketball, so, so for he went him, straight into pro. Correct. He he was actually committed to North Carolina, and because he had such a good all McDonald's All Star game that he went ahead and How about entered. This? Pretty good chip shot. Yeah, it there. is. Entered into the NBA draft, got drafted, uh, and, and has been playing in the NBA. So I guess he has all of he could do this for four or five years, I guess, if he wanted to. Yeah. So at least four. I, I, you know what? I just I kind of think it's cool that he's oh, going yeah. back exactly. and is doing it? something he wants to do. I know Steph Curry's a, a big golfer. You know, he's played in a couple yeah. of pro events. Um, so good for him, been able to go back. So is he what doing some sort of classes and all this kind I of guess stuff? He's, yeah, because yeah. you got to be in class. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He's got to stay eligible. Well, you remember, in unless how- this is a one and done kind of thing for the year, you know, Could be. he may just be yeah. registered well, for the minimum to get him through the season and then get well, him he, out. But. He started out, I think, out of the first five holes, he birdied two. And then kind of ran aground. He ended up finishing eighty third out of eighty four players. Right, not so, a good finish. Yeah. How not about if you're eighty that eighty fourth guy? You're yeah. not feeling really good about your game. LeBron right? said that's about the way he usually finishes. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, the you, you, you feel, I, I think it's cool. He's going yeah. back and doing something else. I think that's that's uh, the, and hopefully you know going to get to uh, get the grades and get his education too. If you remember, it doesn't hurt anything. I mean, he doesn't need it. He's no, rich. No. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm not sure he's worried about what he's going to do for a living. But yeah. yeah. But the uh, but if you, it was before Hams, you and Adler got here. 
but I actually was going to go finish out my football eligibility on the show. And so we, we started we started pursuing this because I had three years left of football eligibility. So we started pursuing this, and, and we ran aground on some of the rules. And it ended up, though, that I could play Division three. Mm-hmm. And and so so we we were setting all that up. Of course, yeah. we set it up where we did a bit about where it was me getting ready, like I'd done a scrimmage. And you, can, I don't know if you can find that on YouTube with the you, kids. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know where it is, but it was a very funny yeah. video yeah. because as as you come away from, you think I'm really out there in a scrimmage because I'm dressed and everything, and I'm like playing against 85 pound guys, and I'm jacking them and knocking them everywhere. <laughs> and it was very funny. And I, we used to have that. In the extreme club, but I don't know if you can search and find that on. I think you can uh, on uh, on YouTube. But anyway, but so we went down this road of how do you make that work? Because I've already got a college degree. Yeah. So when did the football part go away? And in most of the D ones and the one double A's, you you only had a window that you had to get those years in and that window had passed. Yeah, well, let's say, like my case, Rick, I have a degree. Uh, I went for 12 years. And uh, <laughs> right, yes. do I have any eligibility Dr. left? Uh, so. <laughs> this Dr. Bussey you know, thing, it's not just honorary. He's got the years. Yeah, he you hear stories like this. There was a guy that played with us. He was from Australia. His name was Sam Grant. Yeah. He played all four years of baseball, and he <laughs> had one year left of sports. And so he went and tried out on the golf team and the tennis team, and I believe he could have played either one and ended up playing, I think, tennis for his fifth year. Yeah, well, I remember so – well, You hear stories like that, but you don't hear guys like this coming back after so many years. Well, the, re- the reason that we did it, we did a story, and I think it was the Division three school in Montgomery, was it called, Huntington? Huntington yeah, there College, is Huntington, yeah. And they had like a 40-something-year-old freshman that was playing on the right. football team. Right, we interviewed him. And he was, he was yeah. around at that time, not, yeah. not much uh, younger than us. And uh, so that's how we started, that I was going to do that for the show, and it was pretty funny. <laughs> but we went down that whole road of eligibility, and there's only a few places that, yeah. that would work. Now, we, we, if you remember, you know, there's been players that it seems, seems ask, like they uh, played forever and ever. I'll ask a well-known athletic director today and see. see yeah, what right. Says. Well – you can always go to the NAI. They'll let you play. Yeah, you can do anything. Yeah, there. if you just get there, you can yeah. play, right? No problem. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I saw some of those teams. Well, they're, yeah. they're rough. Yeah, it's it, no problem. <clears throat> and there's, there's some great players in the NFL right now that did NAI. Mm-hmm. And isn't there a high school version of that, too? Oh, I don't know. Where they're not under the same deal? Uh, somebody. Am I, did I dream that? Probably. Well, it might be uh, like, uh, uh, you know, the academy. Well, IMG, hmm. they, they – yeah, they just, their high school athletic association doesn't. They can't play yeah. for a state championship, right? Right, they, because it's they they don't accept them. They they basically play all exhibition games. Yeah, would you like to do that? I mean, you're at a high school, you're not, and you're just doing exhibition games, hoping to get a scholarship somewhere. And they're they're nationally ranked. Yeah. But, oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and you but, play some of the best teams in the country. I oh mean, yeah. You don't. You know. Do they have fans? I mean, it, I it, know, it, it doesn't. Weird. I mean, is there a pet I, rally? I, I mean, would. I would think you do for yeah. uh, probably just the other sports that and are the, there. The families and the families. You know, that whole thing started as a tennis academy, yeah. and it's just boomed into all this other oh, yeah. stuff once, once IMG bought it out. Yeah. So. so I just don't know from a, you know, the, the thing that we enjoyed about, high, you know, like we said, I still like the pure <clears> But, Rick, you, you, bring up, you bring up a great point, and, and I don't think you realize it, but it's one I've harped on for tennis for years. One of the problems in the sport of tennis is there is no um, – if you're good, you don't stay in your hometown and your hometown doesn't get behind you and didn't get behind the sport. You're shipped off to Florida to try to get better, and it doesn't grow the sport. Well, the thing about football is so good is because it is a hometown thing and yeah. people come out to see you play. Yeah. And now they're doing to football exactly what keeps tennis from being – you know, wildly yeah. uh, accepted and, and important. And, that, you know, they're they're taking away from what made it good. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't know if it's a good concept or not. Well, I think it's all what is your goal as a player, but I know, I know. you miss out on uh, so many things. It's, just, it's something fun about this Friday night. My community is playing your community, and, and yeah. we're, we're, and, we're on these teams. And, and if you're good enough to play on the next level, they'll find – they don't care where you play high school. No, it's true. They'll yeah. find you. Yeah. The, does the IMG, does it give you that much of an advantage I if mean, you're a great player? Yeah. Probably, probably most probably people on that team are great players. Yeah. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
21 minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba show. Thank you for being with us today. All right, so uh, as a, we'll get to some other stories today, but outside the broadcast plaza and teleport today, uh, there is a sweet couple celebrating their 30th anniversary. 3-0. So, 3-0. 3-0. <laughs> so uh, it, it is, uh, it's, it's April and Lionel Martin, and, and they're outside. They're from Haleyville, Alabama. So, uh, and Lionel works for, looky, 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 here comes Cookie, Cook, Pets Control. Right. And uh, so uh, they were, they were, you know, and and this is kind of them, even though we, you know, during the until we get back to the golden ticket seats, you know, we have the, the windows here. You can you can watch through, and you can see everything that's going on here at the plaza. And and it was so kind of them to think about bringing a gift uh, to us today, which is not it's not required. Now it's encouraged, uh, but it's not required. And and they were worried they couldn't do it because April had to work late last night. And they actually had a neighbor, was it? Was it your neighbor? Somebody, yeah, that, um, that, uh, that said, well, I'll tell you one thing. I know what they like, and uh, and I will make cookies, and uh, I'll do that part. Well, them look good, too. And you guys <laughs> take this gift and bring it to Rick and Bubba on your 30th anniversary, and it's like a variety pack. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I, like, like, I like, unchecked it. Good have stuff. You, have you yeah, already been oh, yeah. in there? Mm-hmm. It, looks like it's got a, it looks like it's got a chocolate chip cookie, some snickerdoodle thing. Kind of good. Yeah, and there's like a, there's an oatmeal it's something a little stack in here. of happiness. Yeah, and it looks like and then you know as it should be the bottom's got another chocolate chip. Sure, in there you got to have two of those. So uh, so I want to thank them for for being here today and uh, for honoring us on their anniversary and also um, to uh, uh, for the cookies that they brought. So uh, a little happy 30th anniversary to April and Lionel Martin. What two happy anniversary, baby? I got you on my mind. And uh, we wish you many, many more. So thank you guys for being here today, and enjoy the show. All right, so we we had this ongoing bizarro story of Brian Laundry and the horrible murder of his girlfriend. Uh, he is uh, suspect number one. Uh, he is a survivalist. He is on the run. Now, you and I both waved a red flag when they did an update and said, oh, Brian Laundry's dad has joined the search. Don't yeah, let him in the no, search. Y'all, Wherever I, he points, go the opposite. Y- <laughs> he's still suspicious in the way that Brian got out of this thing to begin with. Absolutely. It, it's almost like he's sitting there just so he can relay to Brian where they're at. Look, I mean, does anybody not see a conflict Bubba, here? Then? I did this when I was in school. We talked <laughs> about this. Anytime I was guilty of doing something at school, I would join the teachers trying to figure out who did it. <laughs> I mean, I was always looking. Absolutely. What's the best case you can be, Bubba? Looking for yourself. Uh, so anyway, uh, but now then this bizarro uh, Dwayne Chapman bounty, the dog hunter, right? Uh, he decided he was going to join this search. He was going to find Brian Laundry, mm-hmm. but Bubba, he has now mm-hmm. left the manhunt uh, because he cannot handle the physical, uh, I guess, requirements of trying to find. Uh, this survivalist. Rick and he had an ankle injury. And he City, had an ankle, yeah. in, ankle injury while looking for Brian Laundry, and he's leaving the search. Rick, there's a setback right there. Yeah, the dog's not on the hunt. <laughs> the dog is not on the hunt. The Rick dog, has hurt his ankle, the but dog, he said, he said the, the trap has been set. The dog has got a cold nose at this point. <laughs> he's out. What he is he, out. What does he mean the, the trap I has been know, set? Rick. The bait has been set. The bait has something, whatever he said. Did you know Dog the Bounty Hunter's name was Dwayne Chapman? I, I did not, know. Rick. I didn't know. I, he don't look like a Dwayne to me. Uh, he said that his talent that a talented team is continuing the hunt from laundry, and one of the re- reality star's daughters, Lissa Chapman, hmm. as took to Twitter in the wake of the highly publicized departure from the search from her, by her dad, and her declaration is what I just said to you: the bait is set. Rick, he's he's uh, injured. He's out on the sideline at the moment, but the bait has been set. Well, they're in, and they're kind of saying a couple of different things. I think they mean the same thing, but no. uh, she said that he'd gone back to Colorado to handle some business. Mm-hmm. Now, we heard before he had an ankle injury that That's needed treatment. Uh, Chapman told a Florida reporter that he's raising funds to continue what he calls a very expensive search. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says he will continue to process leads in that Colorado while he's there. That means he's raising money to pay himself to search. By the now, way, her her his other daughter. Yeah, listen to this. Greg. Cecily says that her her dad's search is just a publicity stunt. Oh, so, you think? So we got one daughter that says dad is great. The other daughter says ah, publicity stunt. 
<laughs> Guys, did anybody, because you know, he had a show about him being a bounty hunter, did anybody think it was anything but that? I'm not saying he don't want to find the guy, but this is a, a well, very good you know, opportunity. Him and some of his family uh, has had a big falling out. Uh, well, it sounds like it. the last few years. Yeah. He's 68 years old, by the way. Yeah. Right. So we still have not found Brian Laundry, Bubba. No, mm-hmm. Brian Laundry's still on the loose. Look, these survivalists are hard to find. Now, eventually, the like laundry we, is still on the line. Well, like we said, though, that eventually these survivalists get to the point where they need supplies. Yeah. yeah. Unless, unless they never have to do that. But most of them at some point. You remember Rudolph? I mean, as good as was, he was, they caught him dumpster diving. Yeah, how long yeah, was he, he out, was out for? He was years. Out for years. Years. Yeah. yeah. So this may not turn around quickly. So if you do not have help uh, that can help you, uh, you you get desperate. Like I say, you, you have to go to dumpster diving or stealing mm-hmm. one or the other. Right. Um, you know, so. the movie Netflix did about it. I, I wonder how much that they made up, you know, because in, in it, the locals were taking care of it. But I, that Yeah, well, bad. if you've got some people taking care of you, I, I'm telling you, this thing of letting his dad join the search, they don't do that. No. Look, they, the you, mom and dad's already mm-hmm. proved they'll help Brian get away. Yeah, he, was, yeah, actually, he I, showed up at their house without her. And they let him hang for a little mm-hmm. while. So. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know that they need to be in that. So just won't you go back home, and we'll uh, we'll let you know if we find anything. Keep we'll we'll get dog to call you. We'll yeah. So let me ask uh, Bill Bubba Bussy a question. Yes. I, is Brian Laundry still alive? Yes, he is, Rick. You don't think he's going out there and just? No, no. Why would he? If he was going to do that, just do it in the front yard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, he he's on the run. He's on the lamb. Uh, Something happened, I think, you know, and I don't know. He'll have his day in court, but uh, it, it appears that he is somehow responsible for the death of this girl, either by accident or something got out of hand or, or he planned it and uh, tried to tried to hide the evidence, come back. And, uh, you know, I'm still I still can't understand how his parents didn't go. Where is the girl that you yeah. left with? Well, I was she was with living us. in yeah. our house. Well, Bubba, what, what might have happened is where's mm-hmm. the girl that you took with her? Oh, by the way, I choked her and killed her. Y'all yeah. got to help me get away. Yeah, I'm not yeah. too yeah. sure. That, that I'm not too sure happen. that the parents ought to, ought to not be charged with something at yeah. this point. But right. we'll leave that to the local authorities to to wrestle that down. Uh, we won't armchair quarterback that too much. I'm sure they know what they're doing. And, uh, but I, I think he's out there and he's doing the survivalist thing and he will be very hard to find. I think this winter, uh, when the foliage uh, falls and it gets very cold in those mountains, it'll be an easier hunt. But I, I mean, I can't believe they can't go out on a cold night with helicopters with, uh, you know, heat seeking instrumentation and, and find it. Yeah. I'm you, the survivalists are hard to bring in. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm not saying it'll be easy. Yeah. Bottom of the hour. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
35 minutes now past the hour. You're fooling around with your father's brother and your mother's cow. It is 35 minutes uh, past the hour, the Rick and Bubba show, as we make our way back. Ancestry.com slash Bubba. Back uh, with the Rick and Bubba show. Uh, let's face it, fam- family is heritage. Uh, and you want to find out what your family story may be. Many paths, finding your family story. So whichever uh, way that you choose, from maybe tracing your family's generations back um, with the family tree, or maybe you want to uncover your true ethnicity, they can help you. And ancestry, uh, ancestry DNA and Ancestry.com. Let me, let me warn you, uh, if you're going to go searching for your true ethnicity, prepare to be surprised. Uh, but anyway, so it's easy to get started by going to Ancestry.com slash Bubba. Now, their test not only tells you where your ancestors are from, but Ancestry's billions of records and millions of family trees uh, let you discover their personal stories. You, you can find maybe a, a famous relative or perhaps a photo of your great-grandmother as a little girl, maybe a distant uncle that changed the world. It's, it's really amazing all the things that you can find. So if you would like to know your family's true story, and it's a lot of fun to do this with family as well, uh, just simply get your Ancestry DNA kit today and start a free trial to amplify your discoveries with access to their billions of records. Now, here's how you do it. Just simply go to Ancestry.com slash Bubba to get your Ancestry DNA kit and start your free trial. you also find a link at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors. Enjoy it and have a good time with it. All right, so, uh, Bubba, as we make our way back, uh, we do have to, uh, you know, do our COVID update today. Let's see here. So here we go uh, with more uh, COVID update. It's a little confusing to watch it. The good news is uh, we, we seem to be downtrending, which is great news. Uh, but some of the inconsistencies and bizarroness uh, that we continue to find, uh, because, Bubba, we were told to follow the science, but at times it doesn't feel very scientific. No, it uh, doesn't, Rick. It, it feels a little pre-programmed to me. It feels just uh, a little bit uh, politically driven. Numbers are dropping everywhere right now across the country. And, and boy, we're, boy, we're thankful for that. Yes, we are. Well, the, high, you, Lord. the high priest of, of health, Fauci, not sure why anyone listens to him anymore. I honestly don't know. Are there any in this audience? Is there one person? His this, lack of transparency and honesty with the American people is troubling at best. You're talking about the virus. It's anecdotal, problematic. Mm-hmm. So anyway, tell uh, them Rick is problematic. CNN's Dana Put Bash. Put the mask on the kids. That <laughs> you're not going to believe this question uh, that we're actually asking. Okay, like we don't know. We can't mm-hmm. figure this out on our mm-hmm. own. Uh, Dana Bash of CNN is going to ask Fauci when. Now here, l- listen closely. Fully vaccinated people can be indoors without a mask. Uh, so here, here is this question and answer. How long do you think it will be until it's safe for vaccinated people to once again be indoors without a mask? You know, I, it's always tough to predict that. I think if we continue to go down in the cases that we're seeing right now and more and more people get vaccinated, as the dynamics of the outbreak, namely the amount of virus circulating in the community goes down, I hope we'll be able to pull back on some of those restrictions to get closer to what we really feel is normal in the community. I hope that's soon, but I can't give a prediction of a date on that, Dana. What do you need to see? Um, I'd like to say again that he's talking about fully vaccinated people <laughs> when they can stop wearing masks indoors. <laughs> Oh, man, he's a piece of work. <laughs> yeah, the, Truly the, untransparent, again, when all this started, he he pushed the somebody ate a bat sandwich theory, right. which we all were scratching our heads over. Right. Come to find out $600 million of our tax dollars went to gain-of-function research at the Wuhan lab. Much more logical as to how this got out. Uh, and, what did the, what did the, and what did this lab have? 
What did this lab have on the sign they concentrate on? Yes, yeah, the Wuhan uh, uh, Biology Lab. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, why, why didn't he just say that? Why didn't, why didn't he just come forward with that? He, he let the bat sandwich thing go. He knew good and well as a scientist that that wasn't what did this. Yep. Uh, you know, and, but social media had decided uh, what could be said and what couldn't be said. They were dead wrong, by the way. Uh, because they now uh, are the orators of free speech in our country, which I don't know how in the world that ever came about. Um, and we couldn't even talk about it. We couldn't discuss it. And so his whole foundation for everything he says has been misleading and non-transparent. So I don't know why he is still in the job he's in, one, and two, why we're still listening to it. Because, every, look, he, he, I don't know if he can go and tinkle without saying vax to somebody. Right. I mean, he, is, he, oh, just, he just can't do anything without talking about everybody being vaccinated. And it's just, it's just not working the way that it was supposed to work. The vaccine is leaky. If you have natural antibodies, more and more proof is coming out that that's better. It's lasting longer. We have one uh, example here documented uh, going on 11 months still very strong okay Pfizer Moderna can't say that about the vaccine okay their own their own documentation says six months we're, we're wanting to get you a booster now so if you have not had the natural you need to get the vaccine I'm not anti-vax I think it is critical to keep you out of the hospital but this, this whole push of every man, woman, and child needs this vaccine is just wrong. The children don't need it. They're not dying in big numbers. There's been some cases, sure, and it's tragic for those people. And it is a dangerous disease. But it, we don't know what monster we're unleashing by vaccinating all these kids that their chances of dying are one thousandths of a percent. If we're really going to do something to help save kids' lives, if we just look at the numbers, we need to to do a whole lot of other things before we get to this, okay? A whole lot of other things. Yeah, I don't – Bubba, you said who's still listening to Fauci. No one that I know. No. And I when, I, when I hear his voice, he does not bring me in and go, let me go see what he's got to say. Because he's dirty and he's been inconsistent and he's all over the road. And I think, even though he seems disappointed that the second wave of the – pandemic seems to be waning he seems a little disappointed by that third this might be our the third, third or wave, whatever yeah. the second one wasn't all that big a deal the third one i guess was the, yeah, the delta, delta but, but let me say this he shouldn't be disappointed you know how if i broke something i want i want to be able to come back and say see that wasn't so bad yeah, yeah. i mean i wouldn't keep saying that the thing that i did is a daunting uh, darkness that will be over the your life for the rest because you you're one of the people that caused this i wouldn't be I'd be like, look, okay, it's almost over. Okay, so there we go. Wouldn't you? I mean, if I was part of it. Absolutely. So now the Texas governor, Greg Abbott, uh, has banned all COVID-19 vaccine mandates that are being attempted to be handed down. And he says that Biden and his administration, Bubba, listen, you got you to love the fun here. Greg Abbott, the governor of Texas, I love when we use the left words against them because, you know, you don't want to be deemed a bully. <laughs> no. And so, you know, bullying, bully, 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 bully. So he is, bully, saying, bully. he is saying that President Biden is bullying and says the, or, the orders that the bully Biden that keeps bully. trying to hand down is threatening, not helping, harassing, threatening Texas's recovery from the pandemic. Well, yeah. You know why? Bullying. Bullying. Well, just look at this Southwest. It's vaccine bullying. Debacle that we've had. Ted Cruz is saying the mandate has something to do with this because you've got two things going on. People who got the vaccine got two days off. They were taking it. Mm-hmm. That's right. There's another group that said they didn't want to be mandated, so they're taking their, ho- their off time, and it's created a shortage. That's why we have a problem. Now, I'm not really buying this weather story. Because it's funny, does the Southwest planes can't fly through weather, but everybody no, else is can? No. What, what? Who else is having delays like this? Delta? I, I haven't heard of them. Have you? United? No. American? Any of those? So there, there's something going on in the company. I don't know if, if people are taking advantage of the mandate and the days off, or they're boycotting the mandate, 
I, I really don't know. I've heard so many stories. I, I don't. I don't have a, a full well, view uh, of what is actually happening, or maybe it's a combination of all. Of well, Governor Abbott is saying these executive orders that mandates are handed down are causing, to your point, workforce disruptions that threaten. Texas's ability to recover from this COVID nineteen well, economic disaster. Yeah, well, just just think about because this is happening in every business right now. Even the people in the hospitals, we're firing people who won't get vaccinated, and we've already got a shortage of yeah. services available for hospitals. Now, thank goodness the numbers are coming down, so that's going to fix itself. But uh, imagine everything else. What if you're mandated and you're a truck driver, and some of the truck drivers go, "Hey." Hey, you can cram it. I'm not getting anything. I don't need it. I've never had it. I don't. I'm not around people. I'm in the cab all well, day. Well, I got cram a, it, clown. I got an email so yesterday. So cram it, clown. I got an email yesterday from a couple, and they were asking for maybe some counsel. <laughs> but this couple says, uh, "Hey, my my, I'll, I won't say which one it is. My spouse works at Redstone, right? And 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 she's had the COVID. She has powerful full immunity." And she's being told she has to have the vaccine or she can't work there anymore. And he says, so we're thinking about walking. So, you know, Abbott is putting down an executive order that says there will be no entity in this state that can mandate an employee get the vaccine. Well, it, it, we're seeing but we're seeing our, it's, it's causing work yeah, force yeah, disruption. Yeah. Well, we're seeing our civics class played out. You know, where does federal power stop? Where does state power begin what can the feds override what can they not and then you get judges all over the place making all kind of rulings that appear to go against each other so you know democracy hey hey she ain't a pretty thing sometimes all right we'll come back your phone calls are next we got lines available and we got harry murdahl standing by ready to go all 10 lines well actually eight lines available we'll talk to you next rick and bubba rick and bubba
minutes to the top of the hour. The Rick and Bubba Show, 866. We be big is the number. Christine is in Tuscaloosa. All the lines are full. So, Christine, let's start clearing those out. You're on the Rick and Bubba Show. Go right ahead. Good morning. How are you? We are fantastic. Just wanted to let you know that last night on the Fi, Dana Perino said that uh, Southwest Airlines is claiming inclement weather so that they do not have to reimburse people for hotel rooms. Correct. Yeah, if, if they can get it under weather, and, you know, just like they also play games with the flight left on time. Yeah. Uh, they play games yeah. with that a lot, too, meaning you're sitting in the plane. Once we got you in it, we marked that as we left. But even you, though we never left. Even I, though you never left and you sat out there on the tarmac yeah. forever. I, I know uh, I know. Southwest has a large number of flights in the Florida area, and there was some bad weather in the area. But, again, it didn't ground Delta. It didn't ground United. It didn't ground American. didn't ground whoever else is flying in Florida. It, it just looks like that that's not the real story. Doug in Birmingham. Dougie, welcome to Rick and Bubba. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, Green Acres. Thanks hey, for the hey. call. Appreciate that very much. Yeah, about you. What's on your mind? So uh, I'm the Debbie Downer the other day when uh, Bubba was announcing his antibodies that sent the email asking those questions about whether we can, should be concerned about the amount of antibodies we have active in our system. And I was just wondering if Bubba had put any thought to that or if he dismissed it because it didn't support, uh, you know, his high numbers of, of no, uh, anybody. I, I, I think I mentioned, I, I think I mentioned it on the air, Doug, if you, if you yeah, were I, listening. I remember you reading yeah. my email. I just didn't know if, if, cause I haven't heard any doctors address those concerns, anything being asked to a doctor. Uh, you, I just didn't know if you had. Right. Well, um, the problem is getting someone qualified to answer it. Honestly, it's uh, it's not that easy answered, and it's on my list the next time that we have a in depth COVID discussion with somebody. I don't even to, remember to the ask. question. Uh, well, he he was I'll, saying I'll only ask one. I only ask one though, because you know you get a different opinion from right. Two. right. D- Doug basically said because we were talking about our antibody numbers. And he was saying, can you have too much? In other words, people, some people were saying they have 2,500 or higher. Um, is that too much? Can you get too many antibodies into your system and it cause an autoimmune problem? In other words, your body will start attacking itself. Yeah, I understand. And, okay. and that's, that's, Doug, it's a valid question. Yeah. But- and, and, and also, why, why are we measuring the, the effectiveness of our antibody our, the our immuno response by the present antibodies you know if, if we're not in contact with the disease then our body's not going to produce those antibodies like I, I used the MMR vaccine if I got tested for antibodies for measles mumps and rubella I shouldn't have any unless I've come into contact with somebody that had measles mumps and well, rubella and my body had to start fighting it. Doug, I think I, I think I can no, answer that question. Doug, I will I will tell you this though. I did have when I mentioned that I did have some people who work in the lab at UAB and, and you you reminded me of that when you said that. They can run an, a test, a blood test and tell if you've had that vaccine or not. Okay, even right. now. Even though I had that when I was a baby, fifty years later, they can test right, right. for I for some it'd be along the lines of like an allergy test where it's not going to well, your histamines aren't going to levels aren't going to spike until you you have that allergic reaction. Well, it probably wouldn't spike, but I think you you have some level in the blood forever. I, I okay. think I think once those troops are deployed, they keep an occupying force. They may not have okay. the combat soldiers out, but they keep some degree of antibody in your blood system from then on. Yeah, and, and again... If I, I understood their email. Yeah, right. and, and the other okay. thing is, I think if you're living in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the type of society we now live, especially in the pandemic, your antibodies probably are fighting all the time. And that's the reason why you're glad you got them. They're probably... There's no telling. Right. Since I've had COVID, I bet you I've been exposed to it. There's no telling how many times right. I've been exposed right. to it. And see, oh, I had my... I yeah. had my antibody test about a week after I went to a football game with 80 something thousand people there. Right. So yeah. chances are I passed somebody with it, you know, at some point. Right. right. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it, it's a good question because I, I know personally someone that has an autoimmune problem yeah. and when they got the vaccine, it caused it to go nuts. Yeah. 
and they they had all kind of issues with it. And I think right. it's settled down now, and they've been able to treat it with medicine. But um, so those are all valid questions. But I think if I understood the email from the lab <laughs> people, they said once you have it, you're always going to have some degree of antibodies in your system, even though your immune system depends on what I call the filing cabinet, where if it's T-cells. exposed again, it's going to go and go, hey, we need to turn mm-hmm. up production. Right. It but it can take a day or two for it to ramp up. Yeah, and, 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 right. and, and there's no doubt that we are seeing T-cells in people who've had it before, which is good news. But yes. you're right. You wouldn't see that in an mm-hmm. antibody test. It would only show up if it was fighting. Uh, but, so, but I know they did tell me that they can test a blood test to see if you've had your childhood vaccination. So there is some level of something left in your blood. Uh, we continue. Boy, Doug told you. How about the blood, though? Uh, How about the blood? How about the blood is amazing. It's it is. got all the answers oh, in blood. it. Of course, the Bible told us that. Uh, Brandon <laughs> in Texas, before we knew it. Brandon, go ahead. How's it going, guys? We're good. We're good. I live here in what uh, having signed in it would be great for us because that way we can everybody can go back to work and do what we need to do. Yep. But I drive trucks and we're under the FMCSA. Well, us being up under the government, you know, they talk about mandating this stuff. Hopefully, it don't mess with us here in Texas and it'll be, you know, keep us working. You know. But yep. I also got another deal. The company I work for just re- we're fixing to be do- redoing our insurance. Well. If you've had the shot, they don't charge you for insurance for the employee. But us employees that don't have the shot, we're getting double. I like to pay. I pay like twenty dollars a paycheck for my medical insurance. It's going up to forty-seven dollars a paycheck uh, for my insurance. And the ones that have the the vaccine, it doesn't. Yeah, that's uh, that's just this. This is this new thing. We punish the unvaccinated. By the way, even if they have natural antibodies. They treat uh, them like smokers. <laughs> you know, on your insurance, you pay more if you smoke. No, you're right. Yeah. 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 Of course, they're missing a lot of science in there. Yeah. But um, uh, top of the hour, uh, if you leave us, have a good day. you got more Rick and Bubba. Lord willing, we'll be back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
seven minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba show. Thank you for being with us. Forward we go. Uh, the entire team here today, back at full strength. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Van Adler, all in the mix. Phone calls, 866-WE-BE-BIG. Uh, welcome back to a brand new hour. There's Bill Bubba Bussin. Glad to be here and thank all of you for being part of all the fun. Bubba, let's start this hour. You've been holding it. Uh, you've been drawn back like a flip. Four, three, a space two, update. One, yeah. Bubba, Shatner's disappointed. Well, it was only a brief delay, Rick. Uh, the uh, Blue yeah, Origins launch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do what? <laughs> I said at his age, you don't yeah. need a lot of delays. You may That's not great. get to go. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. You're right about that. Uh, they all, the uh, crew of four seems to be in uh, good spirits. Uh, their launch has been pushed back to Wednesday. It should happen around 730 Central Standard Time, if I, or Central Daylight Time, uh, if I read that right. Uh, he told GMA that he is deeply disappointed about the delay, but uh, they're all still in good spirits and ready to go. He will be the oldest person ever to go to space. You got to admit, with this new private thing, where uh, right. we appear to be having a little competition mm-hmm. between Blue Origin and SpaceX. Yep. And look, we're carrying up people that got left behind in the space program, missed out, was yep. the first runner up. Uh, we've got people that were overlooked. We, we're sending young people. We got people with, with prosthetics. We got people with artificial this and that. And uh, hey, it's a it's a new exciting time in space. Got TV stars. That's right. Uh, yeah. Say that again. That's back to my beef with it. Well, you know, here astronauts, just, the best of the best. We're taking William Shatner up. Well, so it, we're joy riding. Not, well, can, I, can I tell yeah, you? you it's like a ride at a carnival. <laughs> it is. Mm-hmm. It, it is. is. It's a very, very expensive ride. Yeah. Sure, it is. Yeah, a, a very dangerous. Expensive but you know what ride. I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Don't forget that. And but I, you know, I and saw. Shatner's about to find out that it's different when you're pretending to be in space. <laughs> I saw where uh, <laughs> yeah. they were in a, a, a blue jumpsuit looking thing. But mm. I, I tell you, if they will come out in Star Trek uniforms, that will be huge. Mm-hmm. Huge. I, I can't believe they they haven't done that. And I got to say something here, and I'm gonna say well, it's gonna well, sound weird. Making a farce of it. He looks older. I get that, but for ninety, he, he looks good. He, he doesn't look that bad. Yeah. Well, seen, you know, he does, but he looks worse than I thought he did. I hadn't seen him recently. Yeah, to just I now. seen sixty well, year olds look older than that. You saw him as Denny Crane for a long time. He was, yeah, you know. Good mm. But I tell you what, this to be ninety, I mean, he's he's in good shape. He is. I'm like. just did you give the Denny Crane thing anything? No, I never did watch that show, even though it had was all about it. It had uh, that in West Wing. Hems and Mary. What was the other hey, guy man. on uh, on that show that uh, plays Red Reddington? What's his oh, name? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You, uh, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Blacklist. Yeah. What's his yeah, name? Yeah, right. actor. Uh, and he played. Uh, he, he was in every eighties teenage Please movie. Please come me, on. What is, you know what is his name? People are screaming at us. Right you know, wow. every every teenage movie in the eighties he was in. Well, don't forget in the office when he came in as the James. New, it was running. He was so and so California. Remember James that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to read lips. James what? James. Oh my gosh! James. <laughs> he always uh, played the preppy guy who yeah. was better than everybody. Oh my who gosh! Is who is James it? Spader. Spader. James Spader. Thank you. No, it's Raymond Reddington. <laughs> so what? Spader. What was the character in the office? He played something California. Yeah, yeah. His last. He always played the snooty guy. What was it? Robert California. Robert, Robert <laughs> California. Yeah. Yeah. Don't miss that character because, <laughs> hey, don't overlook that one. Ooh, wow. It's basically the same guy he always plays, but it's good. Wow, yeah. Season nine of The Blacklist is about to come back. Really? See, I, I faded on that, and I'm so far, I don't even know the story. Well, I might as well back, start buddy. at one and just start. Netflix has about every one. I know. I've seen it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Seen it. Seen it been there. Killed one. So I, I, I never really got into that show, even though it had some actors that's, I really That's liked. disappointing. Well, I, I mean, get off the bachelor and watch it for I've, a bit. I've only Come got on, leave Dance with got, Stars for just one week. <laughs> I've only got so many things. I, I don't spend a lot of TV time. So my favorite is someone who was trying so hard to tell us and they couldn't get it right. James Spaded. Yeah. And finally, they're it screaming did. stupid spell check. It did. It Rick, got you know, let me tell you how bad this is. <laughs> Even when we said his name, I thought no. Nah, <laughs> it, 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 it wasn't like, oh yeah. I'm not too sure that's right. <laughs> that you bad did, right. did you like? Do you remember him, him in uh, the werewolf movie with uh, Jack Nicholson? Ah, he, 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 he was his nemesis in that. 
I, I, knew, I remember. What about him. Stargate, the original? Oh, here we go. No. That was good. Him and Kurt Russell in it. That I just remember him in Pretty and Pink <laughs> when he was a snob. <laughs> <laughs> a rich guy. Stargate, the original movie, was a good sci fi. <laughs> All movie. right, what was the werewolf movie with Jack Nicholson? What's that called? Uh, Werewolves Wolf. of London. Was it just Wolf? Was it just called Wolf? What is that and Wolf and Mich- no, Michelle, Wolf. Michelle Pfeiffer and, yeah, and, yeah. and him, and then <laughs> Take a bite out Spader of was, the, was the nemesis. <laughs> Uh, I can't think. It was. It was called. Did you Wolf. like that? It was a bite Wolf. out of me. Yeah, that, that's it. Well, apparently right, you did say it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, it was graphic. Best I remember. It was really well, it rough. was. Uh, there was a scene where, uh, uh, in standing at the urinals, uh, where Jack Nicholson let James Spader's character know that he would be, hmm. he would be the alpha male. Did he? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, so the uh, and, mm. and 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 really got his point across. And Rick, wow, this boy. this is a great <laughs> yeah. a great email I got yesterday when we were talking about this when when uh, William Shatner goes to space. Here we are. Wouldn't it be funny if the whole crew that goes out to welcome them back put on uh, Planet of the Ape outfits and open the door up like they were now, on that would Planet of the Apes? Wouldn't that be that a good would one? be funny? Yeah. Now what about this Milky Way thing? We don't talk yeah. about that, Mister. By the, the way, somebody, somebody hit me with how long it would take us to get to the Milky Way the other day, and the, the number I couldn't wrap my mind. Well, Rick, we're in the Milky Way. Well, I, it's, but just, it, it's, it's humongous. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. buddy. He talked down to you. No, 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 no. We're sorry. in it. We're in it. Yeah. We were. Uh, it was. It was something. There was a part. Have, have of you Milky ever Way. seen it at night? No. It's very hard to see, but no, you yeah. can if you're no. in a dark mm-hmm. area. If yeah. you know where to look. No, mm-hmm. I don't. Uh, I go. I go big dipper as far as I. That's it. I can't find old Ryan's belt. <laughs> Look right there. That's this. This was, this was the figure. This was the figure. I yeah. heard. Good <laughs> night. My goodness. Yeah. Okay. Read that one out, Rick. Yeah. 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 Wow. Uh, that's a long that, that, way. That's, that's a big old deal. Well, but Rick, astronomers say they have discovered mysterious signals coming from the center of the Milky Way. It was picked up by a radio telescope in Western Australia. I wonder if it was uh, like, whoa, somebody help me. They, they have named the signals. Uh, it's got a long name with a bunch of numbers in it. Not, not really important to the story. No, that's uh, Elon Musk's son. No, they're, <laughs> they're suggesting it may be a new class of stellar object. They're unsure at this point. Not a um, new class. And they say that it, that it comes with regular frequency and then it cuts off. Uh, and it's irregular when it's on, but it, it shows some patterns at times. So, hmm. kind of crazy. But uh, they'll they'll. Is it possible that it's it? the voice of God telling everyone there in the heavenly realms to get ready? <laughs> it, it, it's about to be on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you might want to get your hand hold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, gather the stuff, guys. No, no more crying in front of my throne. You will now all the martyrs will now be. Don't worry, the payback's coming. Uh, so, uh, I'm, hey, is that God reaching over to the faucet of grace and turning it to the yeah. left? Yeah. Uh, so, comes. time for the uh, the kingdom of God to uh, that's righty tidy uh, cutting it yeah, off. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, uh, Bubba also uh, Demi Lovato has weighed in on mm-hmm. space. Have you seen this? Uh, you know, I'm sorry for what I'm about bless, to say. Bless her heart. I, I, she's mm-hmm. she's a very talented singer. But she's obviously had some problems, and yeah, uh, she's yeah. and I don't know that moment. this is showing that she's any better off her or Britney Spears. Mm-hmm. Demi Lovato wants us to know, as Bubba said, showing she's really got her act together. <laughs> uh, that we should not call uh, extraterrestrials aliens because it is offensive. Is she is she serious or is she being funny? That's the first thing Greg asked me. She's being funny though. She right? says the term <laughs> alien no, she is. is offensive to extraterrestrials. Well, how does she know? Does she is have she like some kind of special that's doing it? I think she, she right. said they should be called ETs instead and keep in mind this is from the very level-headed mind that just came out as non-binary. <laughs> um what's which, the Lisa Milano thing? What you have you ever have you, have, you, have you ever have you ever unpacked that? Um and uh, she is encouraging all extraterrestrials to be vaccinated. No, uh, all but, right. But anyway, um, she says that's a derogatory statement, and I'm with you. I keep looking, going, I, I please think, let I me think see. she's trying to be funny. That's is where she? I'm landing. I'm landing there. She, okay. Not just her haircut. She's actually trying to be funny. <laughs> yeah. I, I wish I wish I could hear her tone because just reading mm-hmm. the yeah, statement. she got like some kind of special coming out about space or I something? Don't know. See, that's why I'm thinking. I could be wrong. Wait a minute, Demi, Demi Lovato's going to tell I us about space? Is it Maybe space? I, I may have made, made that. Are you yeah. making that up, Ray? I'll make stuff up. Um, she says, uh, I keep looking for her something that's in the, here. She said this is uh, information that she's learned, so maybe, Greg. Okay, maybe she's being serious, right? Mm-hmm. She's a new show, Unidentified with Demi Lovato. 
Uh, it will be on the Peacock series on that <laughs> little streaming Rick and Bubba, thing. Rick and Bubba.
minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba show. Speedy, don't think I didn't see what you did in the break, because I did. It bothered you so bad what Demi Lovato said. I saw you trying to find the audio where you could hear her tone and everything. Rick, I think we've, we've determined she's serious. Okay. Yeah, she was on a, a, a show Sorry. and they were asking so about the aliens. And, and, I was laughing. Ha <laughs> ha, she's not serious. Mm-hmm. She also said that she felt like aliens would, would be kind. Well, like I said, that explains that haircut. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? Then I can just make anything I don't know about, I guess I could declare. You know, I think Bigfoot may be no big deal either. And I think, <laughs> Rick, I think, I think a Bigfoot, gentleman. You know, just in my <laughs> thoughts, I think Bigfoot desires to shake my hand and sit down and have a cup of coffee. Yeah. Yes. And now he stinks. Yeah, now right. I have, there's no way anybody can prove that one way or the other. That's just what so I'm I can saying. just say it. So anyway, uh, yeah, Demi Lovato, he, Bubba, I'm sorry. What, is, a, what a craze. I mean, look, she 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 was uh, she's, she can sing. She's had hit records. She was a, a, an attractive girl. And go. she yeah. just can't wow. she just can't do what she does. And and uh, <laughs> she's got to she's got to always go off on these tangents uh-huh. and. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, she whacked her hair off one time, looked crazy. And well, that's now got that she don't know what gender she that. is. She's got a well, you know, I, a I neutral got haircut to go with her neutral. She may be confused. I'm not, yeah. right. but uh, mm-hmm. it's just. I mean, why can't you just there basically? You <laughs> by the way, does she know Mark Davis from the Raiders? <laughs> that I got the same barber. <laughs> <Apparently, laughs> Demi, Demi Lovato's new goal is to look like Mark Davis. All right, Bubba. Demi Lovato, Mama June. Make, make a pick. <laughs> <laughs> New scarf too, was <laughs> hey, well, Dr. Burks. Hey, what's, <laughs> yeah, Dr. Burks. Hey, what's the competition? Greg? I just want you to pick the MVP. <laughs> yeah. If I got to tear that sugar up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Demi Lovato is hosting uh, a, a, uh-huh. in search for UFO in a Peacock original series. What makes her the yeah. UFO person? Oh wow. Well, uh, Greg, I've what got, what makes? Britt- is she a singer? Then what, what's well, her that, deal with UFOs? Greg, that's my point. Look, she's had hit records. Just sing. Yeah, good. Do, do what you do. Good. Everybody loves what you do. Mm-hmm. You don't have to hunt UFOs. Bubba, you, might you have no, no credibility in it. Right. Yeah. Uh, and you might want to say. Travis Walton? Uh, yeah, Bubba, you may not want to use up this entire speech because you're going to need it for well, Britney Spears. Oh, no. Britney Spears. You know, as always, whatever Brittany wants you to know, you can get it revealed in, on her Instagram. You know, Rick, and, and I, I can't take credit for this line, and I'll let Greg say it if he wants to, what Brittany Spears needs to do. You said earlier. Do you want me to say it? You go ahead. No. What, you, you, do you, it was Greg's Well, I mean, line. it's effortless. She seems to be good at well, it. Well, he said she just needs to keep making uh, pictures on, on the Internet well, that seems with, to be her thing. with half her clothes off because she's, yeah. she's much better at that. You're than saying, you're saying she may not be a, a, an mm-hmm. author, but well, just stay in your lane, Brittany. <laughs> yeah. Do it. I mean, it's been working. You Every day I, I turn this computer on, you're on. Yeah. Yeah. Every oh, yeah. day. Yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, Rick. She's now, making news now, now every day. keep in day. mind, she, she just won this court case. I need that every dad, time we break. Her dad away from being in charge of all of her business affairs. Right. right. So, and, and all during that, she kept posting nudie pictures of herself. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and all. With that crazy look on her face. <laughs> Don't forget she did cartwheels. Remember the public oh, cartwheels? Oh, sure and I do. Live one yeah. hour, 37 minutes. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Good wow. Um, gracious. The, th- the 39-year-old y'all, musician y'all. posted an image look, look. of a hand coming out of the water while holding a pen. Uh, she says that she's going to write a book about a girl who is stuck in limbo after being murdered according to the Look caption that. on the post. Oh my she says uh, the girl's, uh, the book's about a girl who's been <laughs> murdered, yet her ghost gets stuck in limbo because of the trauma and pain, and she doesn't know how to cross over <laughs> to the world she used to know. Uh, and her dad's a ghost, and he controls her money. <laughs> right. Adler, that, that, that was so troubling. Mm-hmm. That's why you were reading this. <laughs> That's my point. <laughs> Above <laughs> your head, <laughs> it was some of these bizarre posts. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like almost like she's uncontrollably one doing one of her dances. Just keep like, doing that. It's wow. working. Yeah. 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 People yeah. pay. Like she didn't throw her neck out. People pay to come see you do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. pay, or you, you, ain't you ain't got to perform live. Just keep mm-hmm. doing these stupid, <laughs> weird videos. Right. <laughs> Oh and you gosh. don't look psycho at all, do no, you? No, not at all. Oh, my gosh. Y'all, that, that, what are we doing? 
Would you go bald this or have that hair good. for one day? This is not good. How does oh, any court? How does any court remove her dad? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 just uh, what? You know, what the more I, the more I watch this, the more I think her dad's got it together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look, and, and I'm starting to believe he was underpaid. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with this. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to write a book about a girl's ghost stuck in limbo yeah. because of trauma and pain. Yeah, All the right. only her life. The only thing that the I girl can do author. is look in a mirror. That's what sustains her. I, I think one of the things well, that, 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 like that is most misunderstood when you're trying to help somebody, and, and I, I, you, we have literally prayed this prayer so we understand, protect me against my real enemy, myself. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm, amen. Because uh, that, boy, that, it, there, there's, and, and I don't think it takes so long for mm. people to realize you're the problem. You, yeah. you are the problem. It, it's, it's not other people. It, it, you are the problem. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't understand people like her and Demi Lovato who have been wildly successful. I mean, people dream of being able to do what they've done and make the money they, they've made, and they can't just be semi-normal and enjoy it. They have to always go Weirdville times 10. <laughs> Look, thank you. That's good, Adler. <laughs> thank you, buddy. That's good stuff. <laughs> Bubba, do you have Demi Lovato or Britney Spears on the pontoon playlist? Um, I've... I've got uh, I've got some Britney, I think. So, bet you do. On one of them, I think. What'd you go with? Uh, circus. <laughs> <laughs> so real. <laughs> that is so real. And oh. be circus. <laughs> I've never even heard that song. I, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Hit me, baby, one more time. It's about the last one I remember. <laughs> I, I think that was the first. One. Yeah. I, I don't. I've never even heard circus. <laughs> Yeah, you uh, have. You just <laughs> yeah, the uh, oh my God, I gotta see what that is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, <laughs> so you're floating that's on the good. water, and then that comes one. on. Yeah, yeah. yeah circus. I, one in there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's the name of it. It's something like that. Right? Okay. Are you just grabbing for straws on that one? You just, it's, yeah. it says something about a circus. Yeah. He, he, is right. this like now? I remember Kiss Psycho Circus. Well, it's it's her version, kind of that kind of thing. <laughs> Look at please look yeah. at him. Did you that's see him just keep dancing? So that's I all. Can, that's I can't it. help Shisako. I really can't. Mm-hmm. Well, I wish she just do those songs. Well, you remember our ongoing study: are people who are, are kind of mentally unstable more likely to right. be successful in the entertainment business, or does being successful in the entertainment business make you this way? Mm-hmm. Uh, good question. I think Rick, it may be a complicated answer of both. Yeah. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba.
The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my 35 knees. minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba show. 866 We Be Bigs, our number. Are you overpaying for your automobile and homeowner's insurance? Uh, well, you could be. And uh, a lot of us were uh, until we went to Gabby.com slash Bubba. Go to Gabby.com slash Bubba and you can find out for yourself uh, what uh, another insurance company would charge you. For the exact same coverage. And Gabby.com slash Bubba has been featured in the TechCrunch, Forbes, and USA Today. It is free. It doesn't cost you anything to use it. And uh, what they do is they get a little information about your automobile and your homeowner's insurance. They gather that information. Uh, then they uh, they pull up 40 of uh, the top insurance providers like uh, Nationwide, Travelers, um, uh, you know, you have Farmers. Uh, and they pull them up, and uh, you go look over there, and you go, well, look what they charge for the exact same coverage for your automobiles uh, or your home. Uh, and then if you think what they have is a better deal for the exact same coverage, well, then pretty obvious, you just you just change. Uh, G-A-B-I dot com, get a better insurance, slash Bubba, look for that. The average savings we're seeing right now, $80 a month that people are overpaying. Could you use 80 to 100 bucks a month? Uh, and in some cases, obviously, it's more than that. So go to Gabby.com slash Bubba to find out if you're overpaying for your insurance. It costs you nothing to do that. Uh, there's also a link at RickandBubba.com under the Sponsors button. Well, well, we'll have an update from Adler tomorrow. He uh, took a trip to New York City, uh, and thankfully, nothing nothing uh, like this went on. But obviously, New York is having a problem uh, as they have been under communist rule uh, with uh, with the mayor there. Uh, the Bronx, uh, they're saying uh, prob- uh, the, the, the climb in crime is, um, is through the roof and it's being committed by homeless suspects uh, and with untreated mental health uh, issues. Uh, the streets are becoming full of homeless people that have become dangerous. There is a, a list of things uh, that I have in front of me that have happened just recently. And the latest we're going to look at, a homeless man tries to abduct a little girl uh, who was uh, walking with her grandmother in the Bronx by wrapping her in a comforter and snatching her from the sidewalk uh, and taking off and running with her. Now, thankfully, a man at the nearby gas station was able to apprehend the man and retrieve the youngster. But look at this har- horrible scene if you're watching us. So there's the homeless man with the comforter, and you see the Whoa, grab, look at that. the grab and go. There's two other little children standing there right on the right on the curb, and they're they're freaking out. Mm. Grandmama's having a hard time keeping up. The children are very upset. Kind of wish somebody would go over there, but I yeah. know that they're all yeah. trying to go after this man, right? Uh, okay. Who thankfully could not run very fast with a comforter and a and a child. Yeah. Uh, and the and the child was returned, uh, but after you, somebody oh saw it and yeah, stepped yeah, in, yeah. right. So you see the, the the grab and go right there. 
in the Bronx. Uh, and uh, and how crazy. Wow. That's two other little toddlers left on the, the very edge of the sidewalk, which looks like it's the median of, yeah. a, of a street. You anyway, see, they just crossed. I mean, it's right yeah. there on the corner. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and so when when you look at uh, what's happening there, uh, they said that um, that the, the person's name is San, Santiago something, mm-hmm. twenty seven years old, uh, has been arrested and charged with kidnapping, attempted kidnapping, unlawful imprisonment, and child endangerment. Uh, it says that a number of single adults sleeping in municipal shelters has spiked by one hundred and three percent. Uh, and continue to soar mm. since the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, and says New York City is now the home to almost 50,000 homeless people. Listen to this list. 16-year-old girl strangled from behind by a homeless woman while eating at a, a sushi restaurant o- October 4. Um, and uh, they that that's a 36-year-old who had a lengthy rap sheet, including six felony assaults. Uh, we got a cancer nurse was killed when a homeless man slammed her head first into the pavement while fleeing a robbery on October the 8th. That was happening in Times Square, by the way. Uh, we have uh, uh, also, and that person had um, um, had, had been uh, charged with murder. Uh, and then another one uh, who had several prior arrests taken in, in custody on the 5th of October uh, after it showed her shoved the bystander, there it is, into the moving train, yeah. the yeah, subway. Right. So that was God, another homeless I... person who had prior arrest, Um, and then we— Let me ask you this. How many felonies do you have to commit in New York to be off the street? Uh, We've got one here with six. Yeah. Six? The homeless are kind of angry. Mm-hmm. Just saying. So uh, so there you go. Uh, So that is is problematic. As a Mm -hmm. matter of fact, the NFL is thinking of sending John Gruden there. Uh, Rick. (laughs) All right. (laughs) You see, I came back around to one of our first stories. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Like but that? those in big cities are saying that's our pandemic. I mean, we might have COVID. Everybody's talking about that, but the, the homeless are taking over the cities. Yeah. Guys, it, only only in, in our modern just lack of just logical thinking, it is possible for some of your uneducated, hard-to-substantiate reaction to the pandemic cause problems bigger than the pandemic itself hmm. and, and 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 so when when we're doing that and we see that's happening then let's stop let's right because i don't even mind you saying well we didn't know right we were just reacting okay well but we can see that some of these things yeah. have have results that are much worse than the mm-hmm. pandemic itself and uh, and maybe maybe we should stop like when here's another story now here's another hospital that's going to deny transplants yes. to people that are not vaccinated. Now, I, The Cleveland Clinic. Can, mm-hmm. can somebody walk through with me why a person should be denied uh, the, the organ transplant they need if they're unvaccinated? And they say it's due to the fears of recipients yeah. being susceptible mm-hmm. to COVID. All right, so right here is one of those points where I'm going to veer off of this just a little bit mm-hmm. and give them a little bit of lead way because when you do a transplant, it's already difficult enough, but they also have other, and I looked into this when all this was going on, they have other rules in place most of the time. Like if you have, uh, in other words, if you are sick, and, and you're going in for surgery, they postpone the surgery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. And in a lot of transplant uh, situations, uh, if the flu is involved or something like that, they they want you to have all those shots before you go in. So this is not as out of the normal as, as some things. I, I still don't agree with it, but it's not near as uh, egregious as some of these other things mm-hmm. that are going on. And I think it's one of those things we don't need to get distracted on too far yeah. a, as our cause for freedom, uh, because this is more of a medical issue, I think, than a political one Well, in I, most cases. Yeah, I, and I agree with you on the never had it, uh, certainly. But again, this would also include people who have natural antibodies, which is what the vaccine is trying to I right. can't have a transplant if I have natural antibodies. Nope, you have to be vaccinated. Well, I know. See, see, that I, make, that, I don't. That I don't make any sense. I don't like the push to vax or nothing. I, I think that's more political than it is scientific. And again, if we would have just follow this in the very beginning, if we had said, "If you've had it, don't worry about the shot yet. 
worried about everybody who hadn't had it, we oh, may Lord. not have we may not have had a, a Delta uprising. Yeah. So we vaccinated a lot of people that didn't have to have it. Correct. That that's the best case scenario in this. Bubba, I know that, uh, and and I know this is going to cause probably a push, but there's not much you can do about it. Uh, Walmart and Costco are starting to limit toilet paper again. Yeah, yeah. I heard it's yeah. the deal. And toy companies warn parents uh, that if you're trying to get gifts for your children um, and you would love for those to arrive for maybe gift opening on Christmas Eve or something like that, or you have a gift you're going to give them on Christmas Day, uh, um, you know, along with what Santa Claus is bringing, uh, they're saying that there's a backlog at ports, rail yards, and on roads. And uh, they said that these ch- these problems in the supply chain are tormenting retailers. Yeah. And, <clears throat> I mean, honestly. And-, and, and it's all over the road. It's car parks. It's, uh, it's everything. It, it's uh, uh, washers and dryers, refrigerators. Uh, I heard one report today that was if you were looking for a very specific uh, – uh, dishwasher that it could take you six months to get the one you want. You can probably find one, but it may not be the one that fits or the right color. Um, and, and we're just having all kind of supply issues up and down the chain. And we've been telling people for a month that they needed to get their Christmas done early. So, um, you know, I know most of us won't heed that warning, but uh, it was uh, the, <laughs> we did sound the alarm. Well, and, and even at the Rick and Bubba yeah. store, you know, I keep thinking that the you know the gang there surely they're not being serious, but they said, "I'm telling you, mm-hmm. you need to tell people mm-hmm. right now that if they if they want, and we put some new items out this week on social media. We got you know the the Rick and Rick and Bubba University we had for a while, but that we still have that. But there's some that actually have the alumni on it." Meaning you already have your degree in, in common sense. Funny story how those happen, by the way. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so they those are there. And we ha- we just had a new blanket. I yeah, know, the I blanket's know cool. I know everybody likes the new blanket. It's got the cool uh, it's sewn in logo on it. But if you're wanting any items, and you're you're, you're st- I'm starting to see some of the winter stuff moving again in the store, the hoodies and things like that. Mm-hmm. If you have in your mind, I'm going to give the gift of Rick and Bubba this year for Christmas. It's no exaggeration to say you probably want to go ahead and do that. Uh, because you'd hate to be sitting here mid-November, certainly early December, thinking, well, I need that before Christmas. You know, if you've got something you need, you don't care when you get it. Well, then fine. But if you if you care if you <laughs> you're care, on the schedule, if you care when you get it, <laughs> and I'm thinking that in my own life too. You, you you need to go ahead and make a move. And I know what you're thinking. You're like me. You're like, well, I haven't even thought about my Christmas list on what I'm gonna get. I'm not even thinking like that yeah. right now. Yeah, I understand. I don't want to think about that now either. But this supply thing is real, and we've all experienced it on trying to get things ourselves. We'll come back. We'll take your phone calls and uh, wrap up this hour. 866-WE-BE-BIG. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
It is nine minutes to the top of the hour of the Rick and Bubba show, and here we go. Direct assistance, Eric 212. I say, hey, hey, mama, this is Mr. Rhythm and Blues. So let's begin. Uh, Lori in Huntsville, listen to us on 100.3, the river. Lori, 30 seconds on the Rick and Bubba show. Go right ahead. Hey, just want to take a, a second to, to look back at the vaccine and the, um, you can't have a, your transplant. This vaccine is not a, number one, we need to put calling a vaccine to this because it does not prevent you from getting COVID. They don't take into consideration your antibodies. I firmly disagree with you, Bubba. This is not, this is not an exception. This is another, another form of tyranny and it, it, it cannot stand and it is not a vaccine. It is um, a therapeutic at most, possibly. It does not. Yeah, like Greg said it long, long ago, the vaccine would probably be more popular if it worked uh, yeah. and kept mm-hmm. you from getting it. Well, it, it definitely is leaky, to say the least. Yeah, yeah well, look, that's fine. Uh, you, you don't have to agree with me on mm-hmm. it. So. I didn't expect it to be uh, popular among uh, uh, some of the rank and file, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. I, I'm just. I still think that uh, that 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 is high grass, and I wouldn't worry about it. We need to stay on the main topics, and some of these uh, other things will take care of themselves. Because you only got two hospitals in the whole country talking, you know, that have passed these rules. Yeah, the, the point you made about the natural antibodies mm-hmm. makes sense. Now that doesn't make sense, and we've been saying that all along. Uh, because the, how that gets lumped in with people who you know never had it, and had, I, I still don't follow that uh, because we never have treated anything else that way. Uh, Bradley in Fort Payne. Bradley, go ahead. 30 seconds. How are you? Pretty good. How y'all doing? Good. I forgot what I was calling for. I've been on hold so long. So. <laughs> okay. I enjoy the show. Okay, seriously. He really did forget. Wow. Uh, it was you, about Southwest Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you what it was about. I want you to tell the screener. Parker in Albertville. Parker, 30 seconds. Go ahead. Green Acres and Holly Road. Hey. Holly Road. All right, fellas. Hey, I am uh, I didn't get to listen yesterday, and I kind of tuned in late today. So I'm really sorry if y'all have already talked about it. But please tell me y'all saw Bruce Pearl and Cam Newton up in the stands in Auburn. We did. Yes, we, we showed that we video that yesterday. yesterday yeah. Oh, man. Well, I hate that. Enjoy the show, fellas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Uh, let's go to uh, Becky in Shelby County. Becky, go ahead. 30 seconds. How are you? Uh, fine. Thank you. Hey, guys. Um, I just wanted to share with you, I heard an interview on the radio yesterday with uh, on the Michael Berry show, and he had a very lengthy interview, at least an hour, with my, uh, Peter Navarro, who was on President Trump's staff in his initial uh, meeting with Dr. Fauci, and, uh, and he's recently written a book that's supposed to be released the, uh, around the first week in November about in Trump time. If y'all could get an interview with him, that would be awesome because he gave a great interview yesterday. And he talked. And he wanted uh, Trump to fire Dr. Fauci twice early on because Dr. Fauci didn't want to close the borders to China. But President Trump did stand his ground on that. But um, he should have let him go a long time ago. But I think Dr. Fauci is still in the game because he likes being in the limelight. Well, there's no doubt about that. I mean, you're you're right in the beginning, and and this is how people just do when it comes to politics and stuff. You notice President Trump saying we need to stop travel from China coming in here right now was deemed to be uh, what, uh, what is what phobic is that? It was one of the phobias. Xenophobe. Xenophobe. Thank you, Greg. Yeah, xenophobic. Uh, how dare him? Xenophobic. Yeah, yeah, and now yeah. the same people that thought that was unreasonable. Uh, just uh, think that you you still got to wear a mask indoors, even if you're fully vaccinated. Well, ma'am, I heard part of the interview you're talking about yesterday, and it was good. And he said, you know, all these people are, uh, you know, uh, Woodward and all of them are putting out their books, and they've got all these half-baked, you know, secret sources that have leaked this information. And he said he just thought that the record needed to be straight because he was there. He He's not some dark figure that heard yeah. that somebody right. said – he was in the meetings. He was at the table, and he said, "I want you to know what really happened." And and you're right; it, it was a very good interview. All right, so uh, yeah, and and you have to give, uh, no matter how you feel about it, President Trump credit that he did not listen to Fauci on that. And when Fauci got to be unreliable and more political, uh, he got rid of him. Well, he yeah. he he, didn't, he never got rid of him. 
Uh, I'm, I'm, didn't didn't Trump stop letting him come out and talk? And well, say, hey. he he may have shut down yeah, some right. press conferences, but right, he yeah. never got rid of him as director of the National Institute of Health. Right, which is uh, well, you're right. He didn't. Re- yeah, mind. he just basically said you can't talk as much, but he didn't get rid of him. Right. Uh, let's go to Anonymous in Tennessee. Anonymous, go ahead. Yes, sir. How are y'all doing today? I'm doing great. Good, I hope you're doing okay. We are. I work at a pretty hard, high volume hardware store, and I'm elbow to elbow with people every day. And I've either had the virus or immune to it. And I, I just don't understand how all that works. Well, uh, we, we may never know. I was wanting to talk. Aaron, you know, we, yeah. we joked all along that uh, the person in charge of the virus ought to be the same guy running Lowe's and Home Depot because apparently they were immune to it because uh, they were continuing business like normal. And, ma- and matter of fact, selling, yeah, and grocery stores, they, they were selling uh, historic amounts of products. So it did not affect the big box stores uh, on that. And, and, yeah, I think that raises some questions. I will say this, though. I've had many friends who thought they had it, okay, because I was sick back in so-and-so, I lost my taste, I did this. Every single one of them who've gone and had antibody tests did not have it. Every single one of them that I know, personally. So I wouldn't assume anything. Uh, Take 10 minutes and go get the antibody test and know for sure and protect yourself accordingly. Unless you have T-cells, and you may have it put away in the shelf, and they can't detect it. You know? I, th- I think they can still get a pretty good idea on some of it. And I think our testing next year will even be better. I think yeah. there's some more. No, well, the, that, the 2.0 test will be rolling out. So. Yeah, there's a lot of things that uh, that about this virus that are uh, very, very difficult to explain with science. Yeah. Um, and, and the we, consistencies are not tracking. Yeah. And, yeah. There, and there are people, my wife being one of them, and she may get it tomorrow, that – I don't know. They, they seem to have something going on that makes them less susceptible to it than other people, and 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 there really doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to it because they kind of ruled out the blood type thing. Now yeah, she is yeah. in, she is O, and I know at one time that was, but uh, I, I think some people have just been lucky, Rick, to say the least, and yeah. some have been unlucky. Rick, you got to look at that too. Yeah, but the. Um, but but now I will say this, that as you said too, there are people that have immune systems that are more stronger than others, and it and it and it varies too. So you just you, you never know. Uh, top of the hour. If you leave us, have a great day. If somehow you still got more Rick and Bubba, then grab all you can get at rickandbubba.com. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Hey, thank you for watching Rick and Bubba live on our YouTube channel. We're here live every Monday through Friday. Be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell for notifications. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba's in Ohio. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Pass the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't stop. Without him, brother. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Oh, there is no other. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Waking on that blubber. Rick and